Daniel's here. Correctivity for homeostasis and thereby autonomy and sovereignty for European peoples, genus and species. A concept of genetic unionization, structuring social accountability and correctivity of human and pervasive ecology, coalition building and coordination thereof. A reminder first that this platform is anti-supremacist, not viewing exploitation of others as necessary to our cause. It is against Nazism, viewing that as an egregious epistemological blunder. It does not, of course, engage Holocaust denial, does not endorse violence, let alone genocide as necessary to our cause, which is our autonomous and sovereign direction and human and pervasive ecology, <clears throat> coordination thereof. There's been a lot to reflect on and subject to correctivity between our last show and those of others in the past week. So I've had to sort it out <clears throat> in writing and I'm going to read that to begin with. This reading will, however, uh, spare the listener my pauses, ums and ahs that can be a bit disconcerting even to me when listening back. So. I want to begin with some reflections on my talk with uh, Patrick Bateman last time, and then a remark about a guy going by the name of Thomas Seven Seven and uh, some others. But first I want to address the most recent stream by Arval, Arval, uh, or Orwell, anyway, Arval, who put out a stream called Who Really Holds Power in Our World Today? And I'm not gonna play it. Um, I'll put the link in later, uh, <clears throat> but just to paraphrase and critique more or less, Arval begins by invoking something that's been incorporated into my worldview, my worldview and platform for decades now, but which unfortunately the people at majority rights, notably guest worker and Bowery were, were unable to recognize in its significance. That is, that is to say, Aristotle's observation uh, regarding praxis, the social world, that it is changeable, populated by agentive creatures, that is people who can learn, act differently, and that actions upon them can have reflexive effects of changing what was once more predictable. Thus the need for practical judgment, though Arvel doesn't go there, his concern is to uh, try to relativize and um, portray elitists uh, uh, as hard to pin down. Um, and that's what I want to take issue with. Or who our elite antagonists might be and how. Now in this video, Arva wants to apply the changeableness of praxis to whom uh, it is, to whom it is that we treat as elite antagonists, and he wants to depict that as impractically elusive and presumably that we should focus on his positive community building instead. Now, I've said what I have to say about community building. It's rife with personality problems and gossip, not nearly as good a, a level as nationalism. If people want to try it, be my guest in my experience. It tells me that's not the, not the place to begin at all. Um, <clears throat> okay, there are two fundamental problems with Arvel's assumption here. Let's let me check on the, the chat for a second, see what's going on there. Okay, um, and as typically, because what we're saying is important, it's not being attended to by WN. What else is new? But it'll be here for playback. 
Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> there are two fundamental problems with Arvold's assumptions here. Uh, this, for example, is not a reactionary platform, but rather upholds the concept and means to structure our homeostasis, i.e. group autonomy. Um, again, through a concept of genetic unionization and coalition building, structuring social accountability and, and um, productivity and watching those who might be might see themselves as a part from those concerns of ours now who might that be well <clears throat> the elitist antagonists that we maintain vigilance against are of very consistent patterns stable in their nature uh, and motives not very changeable in the negative sense in which they occupy enemy positions so to speak antagonistic positions the uh, the ykw cannot change their concern to defend themselves they have a consistent pattern of interests from their emergent genetics and their top-down rule structuring from elite niches from which they will predictably be indifferent we're not in direct conflict with the interests of the european peoples <clears throat> they are a place to look as soon as any other for elitist conflict with our european interests now, as any any white who has grappled with the problem frustra and frustrations of defending white peoples will concede, even where they try to place just about all of our problems on the JQ, the indifference and traitorous behavior of our own ranks up there as a problem 1B, if not 1A. As, you know, what's the worst problem? The... Um, the YKW or our traitors. <laughs> it's a toss up for the for anybody with any experience and sense. And these two problems um, are not so changeable, not exactly changeable and not likely to go away. Um, The incentive for these kinds will not go away and will not change. You know, I'm talking about right-wingers and liberal. It requires vigilance right along with the JQ. Right-wingers and liberals both are flattered by and flatter themselves by claiming objective warrant, which makes short shrift of their social indebtedness and accountability to our European peoples. The, incit the incentives might be a little different for right-wingers, perhaps a bit more about money, for liberals, perhaps a bit more about license and licentiousness, but the pretext of objective warrant provides an easy account that connects directly to the modernist underpinnings of the epic of which we suffer, directly to the modernist underpinnings in the epic which we suffer and which the YKW are adept at taking advantage. <clears throat> it's the ob objectivist grounds provide to make short shrift of accountability, which they seek. They want to be able to say, that's just the way it is. That's why I'm a liberal taking prerogative and license and why I'm a uh, a right winger so purely warranted <laughs> to take the payoff from the uh, the magic hand <clears throat> now the pseudo warrant bearing uh right wingers and liberals uh does not have to be of in the service of whites either but can be coming from any number of peoples to run roughshod over the border over our borders and bounds Arval does not appreciate that this platform is profoundly appraised. Arval is trying to use the Aristotelian observation of the changeableness of praxis and apply it to our elite enemies. But the thing is this, 
The YKW cannot change their concerns to defend themselves, while right-wingers and liberals will always remain susceptible to bribing under the pretext of objectivism, whether by money or by license and licentiousness. So that, in terms of our enemies, is not very changeable. The YKW, YKW cannot change their concern to defend themselves while right-wingers and liberals will always remain susceptible to bribing under the pretext of objectivism, whether by money or by license and licentiousness. So that, in terms of our enemies, is not very changeable. You can replace uh, Islam for the YKW uh, when they are more in bearing, or, or uh, Africans or Chinese or even feminists, for that matter. Feminists being more of a liberal thing, of course, than a right-wing thing, but it's coming from the same, it's grounded in the same basis. Finally, uh, in, it, in its antagonism of, of us. And again, you know, you say, well, what if these people draw back and they, and they, uh, they take upon a more relative view and, and accountability to us? Well, then they're out of that stable position then then they could be if not one of us if not on our side then people that we can we can work with <clears throat> but those positions those antagonistic positions remain stable so it's not the changeable thing of of praxis that arvel uh, presents tries to write it off as being um finally while trying to say uh, getting a handle on elitist antagonist positions is too hard, therefore, while this platform already marshals that uh, radar tracking, so to speak. Arvel, like the golden boy preacher, would bring his right-wing community to Jesus, the Abrahamic yoke, in the end. And then he has ironically says he's worried about a position that will not bring uh he's he's, he's worried to, to cultivate a position that will not bring about armageddon well <laughs> christianity would be the first one to do that so for the time being at least um we can write off Orwell's platform as not serious um, ours is free from the ambiguity that is the fallout of the inherently unstable right-wing position in its lack of social social accountability and correctivity. Okay, let me catch up with the chat again. Okay, good, we've got some a few listeners finally. That's good. We should. Our paradigm, by contrast, engages homeostasis and correctivity, unionizing our people as Plato himself would advise. Marvel. Uh, presents himself as a Platonist against the might the might makes right of tyranny, engaging a non-Cartesian hermeneutic process in survey of our systemic boundaries to keep track of where uh, they are impinged upon, with a working hypothesis maintaining a vigilance that the two first places to check for problems are with the y, with um, YKW. Uh, rhetoric and, and antics and uh, with our traitors and those indifferent among our people who are well characterized as accurately characterized as right-wingers and liberals. <clears throat> Next, I need to discuss some things that uh, Patrick Bateman had to say last time. <clears throat> Patrick came with the suggestion that I had not uh, carved out a clear and distinct platform here not catering to a significant audience, and that is dead wrong. I may begin by answering, as I had with GW, uh, that in large part, the lack of popularity of this platform so far has to do not with the market speaking against it, but rather with kosher marketing, obstructing it. But even more to the point, it is a matter of time before this distinct platform comes to appeal to its audience, which is the largest audience of European peoples, 
the overwhelming majority of which those who do not want the Nazi worldview are not Christian and can recognize uh, the kosher folks as a different people from European peoples, if not with significantly conflicting interests. So he's dead wrong that I don't have a clear lane. I have, in fact, the biggest part of our people who reject Nazism don't don't uh, want to engage the foolishness of Holocaust denial, that sort of nonsense, who recognize Christianity as nonsense as well, but by the same token recognize the need for a moral order. Uh, and we'll get to an important point there in a moment. And then Patrick adds that I am not garnering my audience in part because I am not diplomatic and strategic enough with regard to Christians. But this is wrong as well. As I've said, Christians are not my audience. As ever, unlike the kosher folks or others who may delight in humiliating them, I do not delight in humiliating Christians. I recognize that they're mostly trying to do the right thing in invoking a moral order. But harsh experience has shown me that this respect uh, has not been a, is not a two-way street in too many cases. Um, that, is, that is a fact that Patrick is not taking into account with regard to my platform's hard rejection of Christianity and, and unwillingness to debate, debate them. All the stupid abuse I've taken from Christian uh, asses like Thorn Holler and the, the guy named Joe over at Majority Rights, for example, are examples of those who would not leave me alone from stupid and uh, distract, distractful tro uh, trolling. I did not go to, I do not go to Christian platforms to abuse them, but rather just, as in the case of Nazism, so to create a platform for those who wanted a platform free from it. And just as in the case of the morons, of the moron OV fuck you with his stupid Nazism, they did not get it that I did not go elsewhere uh, and seek them out for harassment, but rather created in a unique place free from their stupid bullshit. That guest worker didn't appreciate, guest worker from majority rights didn't appreciate it and either was either a function of his unmerited gargantuan ego based in uh, an autobiographical need to contrast him and himself and use his foil certain types, such as Christians and red capers of postmodernity. His convenient straw man that the market has spoken, quote unquote, uh, to make my, supposedly to make my, my platform unpopular, rather than uh, a kosher marketing having spoken as they want to maintain right-wing association to WN, i.e. they want a Nazi and Christian association uh, to be, uh, to latch onto it. And obviously they want to keep this platform, this alternative platform muted because it maintains the YKW as an outgroup as well. Let me check the chat again. Okay. Um, so, that? Uh, Christianity is Christians are not my audience. Uh, so among, I don't want to argue with them. Uh, I hope that they come around and, and uh, see a better way. But uh, well, I, I was a Christian for a brief time in my early twenties. <laughs> People can come around, but I'm not. I'm not looking to argue. I'm not looking to argue with them. Um, so among the things that Patrick uh, was off the mark about was the idea that I have not carved out a niche because I'm not uh, catering to Christians and our overlapping interests. When to view Christianity as an egregious misdirection, a false opposition and red caping of our moral order is fundamental to this platform to provide sound uh, corrective direction for our people against that, that uh, egregious misdirection. A crucially important distinction to its niche, to our niche distinction, uh, and there is a broad, untapped market out there of people who do not want Christianity but need a new moral order. Further, Patrick says that I 
need to be a little more polite and strategic while he defends the likes of O.V. Fakio, this Nazi kid who, who's uh, done nothing but try to abuse me or has interacted with me at all. Uh, saying that he has no, uh, Patrick says, has said that he had no problem with him. Now, I heard him say that in the stream with Norvin when I was not, when I was not participating myself, just loves me. Now, Ovi is the flagrant example of disregard for, uh, for, for concern uh, that we might get along as European peoples. Well, Frody Midyard is a more cloaked redemptionism redemptionist of Nazism. And while I criticize them, um, Patrick is weighing things absurdly to say that I am the one who needs to be more nice and strategic. When you, when you take into account the abuse of these Christians and, uh, and Nazi types, um, I've been leaving against me just for one example like Ovi fuck you in an instant when he issued uh forth a condescending approval like a teacher uh saying good as it oh good as if he'd made progress with me after i momentarily lapsed to say that i am more amenable to christians these days as if that piece of shit was going to teach me it did trigger me and cause me to take back this momentary lapse. I'm not particularly amenable to uh, Christians. I, you know, I won't. I, as I said, I won't go there and bother them on their platforms. But uh, I definitely don't welcome them here to talk. I mean, they, I don't know. I'm not going to stop them from coming, but I'm not. But I'm not. I have no interest in engaging them whatsoever. Um. And debating them and that sort of thing it's not necessary it's just obvious nonsense i'm only more amenable to the extent that i don't have the urgent need to fight them off finally having a platform free from any possibility of their encroachment which my platform does and mr and majority rights almost did under my direction and would have if not for the convenience of gw's uh, unmerited gargantuan ego which needs christianity as a foil is come of age uh, feeling fine about himself in debating Christians and uh, one-upping them or whatever. So he wants to continue doing that. He can go ahead with uh, <laughs> with Thorn over there. This platform can live and function much better without people who are promoting Christianity right along with its uh, rejection. Right along with, and and we can do that right along with our rejection of Nazism. Though I'd like to engage with Red Eyes for their for the Euro DNA Nations project, if it means having to treat Nazism, Nazism with kid gloves the way they do, this platform uh, can do without them as well, as it will do without Mark Collette for all his audience, the otherwise good and good that he does despite outright Nazi sympathizing on his part. And for F's sake, uh, sympathizing with the murderous, unjustified aggression of Putin, as Colette does. How are we doing with it? Okay. Okay, so far. Um, the, the suggestion that I should be nicer to Christians and Nazis looms markedly absurd when you consider how horrible they have been to me. For example, Thorne, a Christian at majority rights, Al Ross, a Nazi at majority rights, and others at majority rights. There are just two among many of this right-wing patty cake uh, that is formed in the end uh, a blacklisting of me. Oh, he's no good. He's not nice to Nazis and Christians. <laughs> he's, not, he's not one of us. A good... Uh, a good old boy who won't punch right. right. <laughs> Patrick is not appreciating the amount of abuse that I've taken, nor uh, not only from Christians and Nazis, uh, and remember, Patrick, I heard you say that you had no problem with Ovi Fuck You. 
from the perspective, from my perspective personally, and uh, our interest generally, that is an absurdity. This platform is staked out, charted an unserved niche of those who recognize the severe challenge of the JQ, but also that Nazism and Christianity are not the right answer. <clears throat> it is on the level of Aki Lux nonsense, these Johnny come latelys in their internet bubbles fed by boomer Nazis and Christians are going to tell me to be cool with Christians and Nazis as just another brand of, of WN that we should get along with without clear distancing. As if I am the one who needs to be more polite, decent, and Christians and Nazis? Hmm. With OV, and when I hear uh, the shit that uh, the shit perspective that Thomas 777 is trying to dredge up from the, Inst the Institute of Historical Review, Metzger used to call it the Institute of Historical Review, and for all and for all his intelligence and good positions that he does take, when Freddie Midyard con connects to this Institute of Historical Review uh, bullshit, no, I will be critical. Same with Red Ice or anybody else. Uh, it's poison. The piece of shit OV fuck you telling me to deal with it when in fact I have dealt with it right along. I'd, I'd be very happy to uh, learn that the piece of shit has evaporated, but I don't go there and uh, I do deal with that. I don't go with, I don't um, need to go and, and bother Nazis and Christians in their platforms. And uh, I have dealt with it by setting up a platform for people like myself who don't who recognize that stuff as uh, counterproductive to say the least and want to move forward on sound epistemological premises but I had the road to hell can be paved with bad intentions as well and this is one thing that that uh, came back to me clearly with the um, instigation and incitement that was coming from OV Fuck You. Uh, it could be very hard not to get drawn into a pernicious charm loop by the incitement of an OV Fuck You. It's perhaps a good thing that he's not German or I might have been lured into a few anti-German epithets when he was calling me a Polak and it would be off, uh, off to the races with those like Carolyn Yeager, Hatting Scott, the people at Renegade Broadcasting who would just love uh, a quote that would supposedly prove that I, that I don't like Germans and I'm a Polish chauvinist, as Hatting Scott stupidly tried to allege of me. Ridiculous. No, it is in the service of sound judgment. This platform will not treat Nazis like they are just another nationalism. They are imperialist supremacists, and they, by de definition, cannot get along with other nationalisms, including other white nationalisms. Although Tan Staffel tried to say just that. And I, I can read the quote from Majority Rights later, but he said that he views... Uh, quote, national socialism as just the German brand of nationalism. Uh, no. They do, and they do not have the cooperation from me in this platform, nor would adopt kindred right-wing shite like a case system, as Patrick and Norvin were endorsing the last show. Their being into the case system is just, that's uh, apparently a, a lingering expression of uh, right-wing pseudo-objectivism irrespective of organic evolutionary lifespan processes and organic processual niche disbursement of historical human ecology. With that remark, we need to segue here to the next important point to make with Patrick, who says that he wants to get deeper than the problem of Christianity. All right, come with me to the depths. And you'd see if you paid more attention to what I say. Uh, you observe quite rightly 
the difficulty in organizing whites for their competitiveness. All right. There's a presumption, though, that competitiveness is a completely natural and is completely natural and, and necessary. This is, a, of course, based on natural fallacy, which is more just strictly causally competitive as opposed to um, the practical judgments of human nature, which is in praxis and uh, amenable to negotiation and change. Um, including, you know, so, but there's a presumption that com competition itself is completely natural, is completely natural and necessary, including for creativity, whereas it is rather, in fact, a reaction to like, not, is often in its, where it is um, overemphasized and overdone, a reaction to didactic incitement, producing repetitive, rigidly quantifying responses prone to a uh, systemic runaway. Look around. Most of what people are doing is cooperating. Look to nature, even. Niche evolution tends to evolve in different directions rather than compete over resources. Unlike Claire Call's nonsense, her proposed <laughs> secular coronism, or guest worker's stupid remark that you can't build a moral order in your garage. Uh, he should be saying his garage, uh, as if that's where ours or any other moral order is built. In Claire's Abrahamic farce or in GW's idiot garage, rather than in a negotiation between people in recognition of what we deem sacred for its value to cultural patterns transcendent of moment and episode, personal autobiography and, or relationships, from, from forbearance to legacy. There is no avoiding a negotiation of moral, <clears throat> there is no avoiding a negotiation of moral order. You come into it, like it or not, obligations, prohibitions, legitimacies. Patrick needs to have Clerk Maxwell's demons discussed if he wants to get into the problems below Christianity even in subverting our capacity to cooperate, unionize, build coalitions, and advocate our people. Okay. Uh, Clerk Maxwell's demons drew a distinction between Augustinian devils and Manichaean devils. Augustinian devils are natural devils i.e. challenges of nature. Not as clever, they do not generally change uh, to, to defeat us when they are solved. These are the challenges that Europeans, particularly Northern Europeans, are most evolved to take on. And while it has made us great scientists and engineers, it has also left us a bit naive and dupes when confronted by those who are evolved to take on Manichaean devils, such as Middle Easterners, or evolved to take on Manichaean trickster devils, which can change the rules when, quote, solved. As the evolutionary situation was competition more with other groups rather than natural challenges for resource, uh, deception was then part and parcel. But this does not mean that we are naturally, this does not mean that we are not naturally cooperative, just the opposite, however. It does mean that we are susceptible to reaction, to not handling well the trickery of Manichaeanism, whether the Mossad and its motto, uh, wage war by deception, or Islam and its strategy of taqiyya. Um, and I tried to, to tell Aki Lux that he should not be countenancing O.V. Faki's proposed didactic incitement as some wise Socratic method since the road to hell can be paved with bad intentions as well. One reacts on the level of a moral Puritan, unable to trust on the meta level uh, when they're uh, kicked when they're down, when they're mocked. 
I would imagine, including Patrick, will not, with my prompting, overcome the anti-Slav, anti-Ukrainian position that I heard him espousing when I left Norvin Stream and heard him say when I listened back. He was he probably has too much investment in right-wing reaction, including too much in investment in IQ, when all IQ does, or most of what it does, is in terms of advocacy, is counter stupid Marxist arguments. Um, while it fails, Marx, stupid Marxist arguments of while it fails utterly, in that it impl implies that if those people have sufficient IQ, they are welcome in our group. All those of us who do not have quote sufficient IQ are not welcome. So you're setting forth a slippery slope, uh, which justifiably scares people. And of course, the, the YKW are going to busily um, uh, promote this as the, the Ashkenazi are among the highest IQs, and so supposedly welcome as as uh, positive contributors. And while you uh, will likely remain invested in that uh, IQ business, you will not see that it is even speaking the grander truth of our various people's value, even in matters of intelligence. I would warn you, though, while you mock Patrick, that comedy is another's tragedy. And add the question, are you sure that you're smarter, so much more valuable than, Ukra than Ukrainians that you should play a part in eliminating them? Neither you nor Tan Staffel, as he would try to propose, is going to change Hitler or Nazism into just another nationalism among brothers. If you can solve this issue of competitiveness for yourself, you may, have in may gain insights into the deeper problems indeed. And it's not about be, uh, benign, obsequious loving of everybody. And it does not correspond with drawing better friend, excuse me, and it does correspond with drawing better friend enemy distinctions, if enemies at all, in recognition and valuing the niche differences that ethnonationalism protects with its borders and within it, excuse me, that ethnonationalism protects within its borders and in between. Maybe competitiveness is not so much a part of our objectivist Augustinian nature. To date, <clears throat> Patrick seems to think that the thing to do is engage and win some sort of competition for erudition, or the most erudite, whereas I have gone to the point of, in erudition where I needed to help our people catch up with premises that cannot be glossed over and have been satisfied with my erudition enough that I have what I needed to begin implementation and articulation in the, in, the, in the case and cause of our advocacy. I'm not interested in an erudition competition with Patrick, Keith Woods, Joel Davis, Arvel, Greg Johnson, or anyone else. Because what happens at this point, if they glean anything through erudition that I have not yet myself, or have forgotten, then it is ensconched and merely adds to or enhances my this solid platform. Your Patrick and uh, with his erudition competition is making the same right wing non qualitative mistake as Greg Johnson, discriminating vertically instead of horizontally and blinding himself as such in this competition to the misdirection of a Joel Davis. And Joel Davis, who said that he, he sees uh, Israel as our friend, that he, he has this teacher, his grad school advisor is uh, this Katz guy. Uh, he thinks that Paul Gottfried is wonderful, and uh, he's going along with the, uh, you know, the right-wing ultra cast against the left. All, you know, he's making all the... the um, the rookie mistakes maybe he's a catholic so he's not on he's not free of of the uh, abraham i killed there etc cetera, etc cetera. um
That is to say that that uh, Patrick, at least in our last talk, was not displaying sufficient critical distance of Joel Davis, and, and uh, that's why he was wondering why. I, you know, it's he was wondering why I would be, uh, whereas I should be critical of Joel Davis. It is likely that competitiveness is not so much a part of our objectivist Augustinian nature. And while it can be prone to naivety and to being duped by mannequin trickery in the short term, in the long run, if we are to survive, it is Augustinian devils, it is Augustinian devils which we must be able to solve. And we find we naturally find Manichaean devils a mere nuisance with good reason. So it's not our nature isn't wrong, but it but it does need to um, deal with the fact that uh, we're being confronted as a naive species by uh, invasive invasive species which are wielding Manichaean devils against us. Thus our competitiveness itself may be an affectation resulting from didactic incitement of these Manichaean types. Again, the, the road to hell could be paved with bad intentions as well. Like flypaper, it does not uh, come off of you and gets on everything that you touch. The road to hell can be paved with bad intentions too, as the reciprocating as the reciprocally escalating diatribe that ensues spirals into runaway. Look at your own overcompetitiveness while you observe it in me and others, that it may derive largely from instigation, a charmed loop of didactic incitement, mannequin style trickery, which invokes the meta level wherein you become a, mo a moral Puritan because it becomes harder to trust. So you compete even though your radical nature likely is to be more Augustinian and to cooperate. The road to hell can be paved with bad intentions too. I tried to explain this to Eki Lux when he was trying to tell me not to be too sensitive about the piece of shit OV fuck you and his insults, badgering and proposed didactic incitement of me. It is the road to run, it is the road to runaway competition, a charmed loop of quantifying rigidity, reciprocally escalating diatribe and war, the kosher harvest. This is where social constructionism properly understood as opposed to the red caping of its, of it is so deeply important, along with a proper understanding of postmodernity as it would serve our interests. The red caping misrepresentation of it as hyper-relative, ironic, da-da, deconstructionist nonsense, and other, misrepres other misrepresentations of postmodern concepts, such as hermeneutics, its liberation from mere facticity and willing suspension of disbelief. Now, I don't expect anyone to read my stuff, as I, I myself prefer to listen to podcasts than to read, but I'm repetitious enough by design in my writing and podcasts so that people can get what I'm saying. It's not as Bowery uh, wrongly accused me and 10 staff will try to as well of, you know, just endless, endless prose. Um, perhaps I'd better think twice before allow, uh, allowing Patrick to interview me on his platform where he says that he'll ask hard hitting questions. The big problem is that he, he asks questions which I'll answer, but then he'll immediately start interrupting me and pushing back. Uh, bad of itself, but particularly for me, as I do not have a great short-term memory. So an important point may be talked over and even distracted from altogether. Uh, he's too concerned with com competition and winning, even at the expense of better truth. I mean, I'm being hypocritical. I am being hypocritical when talking to Patrick, having sworn off of him when I left the Norman podcast only to listen back to him saying that he had no problems with OV fuck you and that he didn't like Slavs, especially Ukrainians, saying something like he was going to go there and I don't know what subject them to whatever, that they have uh, an ADIQ or something. If he thinks that he has Ukrainians sized up across the board, I believe that he is in for a rude awakening. I think not just of the wasteful antagonism of the people with such beautiful white women, but 
of the men, for example, my brother-in-law, who's taller than than um, than Patrick. My brother-in-law is six four. He's handsomer than Patrick. I'm, there's no doubt about it. He's more wealthy than Patrick, no doubt about that, and probably has a higher IQ than Patrick. That's just one example. You know, just the first example of my life. And I think of my friend's father-in-law, Ukrainian, who operated a complex car diagnostic, uh, who operated complex car diagnostic machinery out of his house, bedecked with all the latest in technological ga uh, gadgetry. I think of the consternation brought about between Tan Staffel and Carolyn Yeager when Hitler's table talk brought out uh, what, what Hitler really thought of Ukrainians and uh, her loyalty to Hitler over good relations, um, placed over good relations between white people, where people must make a choice. Are you for Hitler or are you for white people? Because it, it does come down to that. You can't be both. As an example, Carolyn agreed with Hitler that Ukrainians were simply inferior, like the N-words. But Tan Staffel wanted to assure me that the problem that he had with was with Carolyn person, personally, not with, quote, quote, national socialism. And again, I, I hate that euphemism. And this shit continues as Thomas 777 of the Institute of Historical Revisionism empathizes with Putin's invasion and massacre. He emphasizes the, the Slav word, saying that Ukrainians are apparently natural Slavs. Natural slaves, excuse me, disgusting. And Patrick is prone to this bad friend enemy distinction expressed even in pushback in our last discussion, the Ukrainians voted for Zelensky. <laughs> Saying that the Ukrainians voted for Zelensky. Well, what about uh, Ihor uh, Kolomovsky, his uh, the um, kosher millionaire, uh, his money and marketing capacity that backed Zelensky, and it should be right off the Germans because they quote voted for Angela Merkel. Right wingers, reactionaries to Marxist nonsense that they are would be susceptible to the red capes, such as Steve Sauer's red caping of human biodiversity as a distinguishing matter of vertical, as a distinguishing vertical matter of IQ, specifically Ashkenazi IQ at their convenience, rather than what it is supposed to be about horizontal qualitative niche differences to be respected as such. Intelligence only, only addresses one objection that is not even or should not be our primary objection as advocates because it says that Marxist critiques that suggest that social oppression is the reason that non-whites cannot participate satisfactorily with us when in fact we do not want to participate with them, period. Like if, uh, as if they did perform better IQ-wise than your daughter or son, you would welcome them as a replacement such as the stupidity of objectivism. Thomas 777 says that Ukrainians are apparently born slaves. And look at who Thomas 77 has as his side as his sidekick, another Clara Kaw, some Asian guy who doesn't give a shit about 50 million European lives having been destroyed. And is fine with Hitler's worldview that wants to blame, in fact, has has to blame everyone besides Hitler in order to revise and redeem him and his regime. Uh, treating Thomas 77 as a maven of truth and featuring him is a bad rookie mistake that the entryist into the right wing of East Lub sphere like millennial woes would make. This is, you know, kind of chaperoning into uh, the kosher framework. Well, you can have a certain e celeb status as long as you are espousing these right wing positions. <clears throat> Which brings me back to Millennial Woes. I had occasion to hear a podcast from him from the first time in a while. And it was a shame because he was talking to some kids 
who understood the gravity of the situation and an important respect uh, and important respects had better had better perspective than millennial woes and yet here was millennial woes talking like he's a salty old veteran of it all saying how back in the day we thought trump would save us trying to say that he was so ironically on top of it with his germanophilia emerging with nazophilia <clears throat> now that kind of that's the kind of fool that would think that trump was going to save us um he may have been better than hillary but that's not saying much uh, and he was clearly put up and run for presidency to undo the Rand deal for Israel's sake and perhaps secure some YKW real estate holdings in the US pay back for YKW quote Russian help he got for bailing him out of his failed real estate investments <clears throat> what lack of experience and perspective does it show for millennial woes to talk that way for him to say that he liked the alt-right to not see that it was an op for him to participate in the blacklist of me in order to white knight for vivian veritas to ascend through the kosher gatekeep to alt-right dissident right e-celebrity now if we were to get deep we have to do some work on the friend zone not just clearing away uh the idea that when when it comes to women it's only about getting laid like an r selector but rather valuing the friend zone and valuing it with our men as well drawing better friend enemy lines where we need enemies at all we need to destroy the cartesian story the purity spiral of pure love and friendship unmarked by practical concerns <clears throat> as if that is somehow dirty we need uh, practice in the cooperative social violence of social constructionism which connects to that which is deep but detached by errant custom and habits of Cartesianism objectivism and, and estrangement from the subjective and relative interests of our practice of our practice from the scientific stem boomer fuck-ups like bowery and guest worker don't you criticize modernity and cartesianism stay far away from it as if i'm supposed to say heidegger was talking nonsense when he said kant was still cartesian because it threatens guest workers unmerited gargantuan ego his rigid reaction and quest for foundations beyond rhetorical challenge because or because it sends bowery's cartesian anxiety into scientific fits because computer nerd Tan Staffel wants to believe that talk of praxis is, quote, jargon devised to distract from the JQ, so that when I say anti-race, anti-R is, Cart anti is Cartesian, it is not innocent, it is prejudice against prejudice, even necessary classification, classificatory discrimination. Thus it is hurting and it is killing people. As if he is saying something mutually exclusive, making that redundant by saying anti is anti r is a jewish construct that my logic is poor because it is not lineal computer nerd fixed on locating a singular point of circuit break <clears throat> hitler's worldview was an epistemological blunder going below the correctivity of practice into cartesian direction of natural fallacy prone in this reaction to systemic runaway and disaster now, before getting to our uh, resistant competitive psychology as it manifests at present, we we'll need to undo misdirection, Christianity being just one red cape taking advantage of our Augustinian nature and predilection. Patrick wants to show that he's the most tough and best uh, governor of intellectual competition. But I'm not trying to compete with people intellectually. I went on pause with erudition for the most part when I exceeded the parameters of what our people needed to learn and what I needed to get for our advocacy to get underway. When I saw that people generally did not understand that I, and, and I needed to explain, not furrow into yet more detail and variety, 
that is intellectualism in a bad sense where I would where I might where one might throw down and, and, and just do more intellectualism where the overused smear of pseudo intellectualism is for once well well placed as opposed to the misdirection of our people into doltish uncritical followers of Jewish quote intellectuals Thomas 7 7 cute personality that he is coming out of the Nazophile Institute of Historical Review is the kind of guy millennial warts would feature in his homo yule maybe i won't be friends with him maybe there is a better chance with frody but for now let's start here and after a quite prick after a quite prickly overture uh for something that i'm entitling the friend zone nevertheless to bring it back on upswing i think about what norvin uh i think but Norman is looking at things backwards to his disservice where he looks at what women want from a sperm bank donor. Rather, we should look toward what we want along with secure borders and bounds for our progeny. And in shopping for a mother for our children, just as there is no such thing as an insult, it's just as there's no such thing as an insult if you have $50, there's a bottom line of potential surrogates slash mothers, the stupid, the ugly, the drug addicted prostitute who will have a baby for a certain amount of money. Thus beginning with the bottom line, clearly showing that it's not, a, not that it's not impossible. Then naturally we try to do a bit better than that, even to the possibility of a normal non surrogate relation. Let's get over the Cartesian concept of pure love and even pure friendship and get into the friend zone. It's practicality. And I hope that Patrick and Norvin will take this as friendly advice that we do have a clear niche platform here that um, will attend to the vast untapped audience, the vast majority of European peoples. That serves to the broad, vast majority and largely untapped majority of white European peoples. Okay. That's what I had to read, and let's see where we are. Um, uh, Norton says that he's in a stream. Well, that's your loss. Okay, so um, I'd be willing to, at this point to speak with, if Murth Barron's around, I sent him the link, I, I certainly would talk to him. I would talk to Norvin, of course. I'm not <laughs> particularly eager to talk to Patrick in light of, you know, my critique of him, but it, it was um, a critique in goodwill. And, if he's able to talk it, talk, uh, if he's able to handle that, I, I, uh, I might be willing to talk to him. Otherwise, wait till the till things have cooled off and, and uh, talk to him another day or another week. Um, I, I sent the link to Tiffany, of course. I would speak with her. I, I would speak, I should have sent the link to, uh, Amanda, I would speak to Amanda. She's over there in the Middle East. Um, Perry Norton said that he is not fully recovered enough quite this weekend, but he says that he will be soon enough. That he looks forward to talking. Um, I don't know if a uh, snorkel blog is around. <laughs> I might have uh, scared him off with my hard line against uh, quote national socialism, but I'm sorry. That's that's something I have to do. You know, 
if nothing else, I'm being honest with myself. I can't pretend that that stuff is uh, is, <laughs> is friendly, not only to my interests, not only to the, the you know to various European interests, but to 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 European interests generally. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they have they have points to make, and, and frequently the the um, it's sort of uh, aficionados or very intelligent people, like like the Sewell guy or uh, um, uh, what's his name? Who's uh, Emily Lucas's husband? Warren Belloc. Uh, oh, we've only been going an hour. That's good. Okay, so I've sent I've sent the link out, and um, I'm not getting rid of it. I'll put it. I'll risk putting it in the chat. Though my experience tells me I'm, I'm going to get nothing but stupid trolls. Right, people I don't want to talk to. Um, but I have had a few experiences of people talking to me who I found quite benign, if not good. This stream has been, uh, though, in a way it's better, it might be better to just leave without uh, interlocutors because I'm not, it's, these are long and deeply considered important issues that have uh, discussed in this first part so it's it's a, a worthy resource of, of itself and um i don't want some experience like making a careful important statement like that and having some idiot like tom white come on who's like you know, we're just talking here you're within the mouths of germans you're a Polak, right you're jewish right <laughs> It's like, Seamus Crawford, you're uh, you're pushing the line. One more re remark like that, and you're gone. As I said early on, you know, you may think it's funny. One one person's comedy is another's tragedy. As I was saying, you know, that kind of incitement, you know, it's like um, the road to hell could be paved with bad intentions. You know, some asshole is going to a Pollock. It, it's like really hard to resist. It's not a term of endearment, she was called for. It's an, it's an insult term. Um, and as I said, the, the, the road to hell can be paved with bad intentions. I, um, concept is meant to call attention to the fact that you, you it's easy to get drawn into a reciprocally escalating diatribe then i call him a kraut that turns into 
quote, proof to people like uh, Claire, uh, excuse me, Carolyn Yeager and Hatting Scott that I'm supposedly anti-German. And this escalates into worse and worse conflict. It's not, it's not, it's never something that I'm going to stand for. It's not funny. It's not good. And your, even, even your name, this trolling name, Seamus Crawford, is, uh, I, I'm not, we're not doing Jerry, we're not doing a Jerry Spur show here. This is not about, we don't welcome trolls and don't find this bullshit funny. Okay, well, I'm just going to patiently wait. What else happens in the news? I didn't follow too closely the story of uh, 23 Ukrainians were killed in a city, pretty much in the center of, of Ukraine. It's even east of the Black Sea. It's, it's even me, west of the Black Sea. It's even west of Odessa, as far as I can tell, way in there. Um, I can't see, you know, the, the arguments that, that, any argument that Putin has in being justified to bringing Russian military and, and military apparatus into Ukraine, for me, stops with the, these eastern regions, which, okay, maybe historically are not justified as Russian um, having been populated by Russians in the wake of the Holodomor of Ukrainians. But given the practicality of the circumstance and the fact that um, you know there has been aggressive action by the uh, improper aggressive action, I would say, it, wherever it ha has happened, by the Azovs, who may have been backed by neo by kosher neocons and by uh nato um putin has an argument to move military in there and to defend those regions it's practical grounds for that i'll grant him that but not to attack over that border into ukrainian lands um, who was it saying? Mark Collette was saying that uh, this is a reverse Cuban missile situation. That, Na that NATO was threatening to put um, nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Well, I don't I don't suppose that nuclear weapons being in Ukraine is a whole lot different than their being in Germany. Maybe a few minutes difference. Um, but an attack like that, or a positioning like that, doesn't merit. First of all, it's, it's, not, it's not a clear and imminent danger. It's, it's the same mutually assured 
destruction is still operative. If if uh, Ukraine were to base nuclear weapons and attack Russia, then Russia would would uh, would counterattack with nukes. So it's nonsense. Um, you know, <laughs> Thomas seven seven. Also. Blaming, blaming the Ukrainians. Um, I don't. I don't see Putin as justified at all. And you know, just the other day, twenty-three Ukrainians. They look at them. Just they look like you and me. These Ukrainian people, and not nowhere near the border of Russia. Way, way into the central west of, of Ukraine. No, not boots on the ground either. With all things, it's gotten it's gotten out of hand. It, I don't talk about Ukraine much, and I don't engage the issue much because uh, I don't, it has not been handled correctly from the beginning, as far as I'm concerned, by Ukraine, and in response to Putin's unjustified attack. Um. But I, I did I did take note of the fact that uh, you know these people these right wingers Mark Collette Thomas Thomas seven seven even even I'm sorry to say uh, Kevin McDonald or you know rooting for Putin and, and that and like then just you know do you understand that this guy is murdering people is murdering European people civilians. And you think he's justified? <clears throat> no, don't supply them. Don't supply the Ukrainians and, and the and this uh, Operation Clean Break with military assistance at our expense for a brother's war. Um, and the kosher harvest of war. Don't supply it. And uh, back off. Uh, since tact was not sufficient to prevent Putin from this unjust invasion, uh, we have world sympathy for ethno-national, Ukrainian ethno-nationalism, as an example, by the way, of ethno-nationalism, period, on our side. And to slowly and cunningly take back true, organic Ukrainian ethno-nationalism and have that be one, hopefully, among many examples of true organic ethno-nationalism. Uh, MRLC, this is a stupid question. What should Putin do, defend Russia or defend the European peoples? Uh, Putin was not under attack. He, there was a, there was a there's a cultural attack of the quote pause coming from the west which was not even his stated concern his stated concern was military attack and which was not coming there wasn't going to be a nuclear attack on russia there wasn't going to be a military invasion of russia if putin were to say that uh, the kosher folks and their right-wing and liberal 
uh, or little mostly allies were going to try to send the pause the way of Ukraine and, and Russia. Yeah, but that has to be fought. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't fight that with... Uh, if you really care about people and defending our people, you don't... Uh, you don't you don't fight that in a in a old fashioned military way. There are more clever ways. You know, there's economic ways of fighting. There's uh, ways of showing a better way of life. That was at their disposal. Yeah, Germany is full of Ukrainian flag, and that's and that's good. That's what I mean. People say, "Oh, these right wingers say, oh, they, these people are putting up the Ukrainian flag. They're such phonies." Um, that's a good thing. You know, they're they're putting up a nationalist flag that represents a people, an ethno nation. They're supporting that, and. You know, we're not going to let other people tell us what that means. That doesn't mean supporting destructive support for Zelensky to, you know, just a an absurd war against. Russian military might that's costing the lives of how many prime lives of Ukrainian men. <laughs> it's, it's killing women too. This, I mean, why these right wingers like Mike Marklet try to make that connection that if you support Ukrainian nationalism, that you support the utter irresponsibility of Zelensky, who is not Ukrainian, he's Jewish, and he's, he was put there by Operation Clean Break by the likes of Newland, who's now Under Secretary to Blinken, and her husband Robert Kagan, who was one of the authors of Operation Clean Break to secure the realm around Israel. He is not organically related in motive to genuine Ukrainian interests. Which would have our support to do things the right way over the long haul without costing uh, Ukrainian lives, without subjecting their cities and houses and, and infrastructure and capacities to destruction by this absurd engagement in a war like i said i can't even like i can't even like uh, um attend to this every day anymore because it just they've they've taken it so far in the wrong direction to begin with putin of course but following that the, the response greg johnson thinks thinks that uh, Zelensky's irrelevant. Ridiculous. He's irrelevant. Guest worker thinks that too. So we had the, the uh, Shinzo Abe assassinating. We have Boris Johnson stepping down. Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, I don't I don't see anybody interesting on the horizon. I know I know very little about 
British politics. I, I don't follow any conventional politics all that closely. Um, so I get criticism for commenting. Uh, I saw some good things about Michael Gove, and I, and I know that I know that that would uh, you know people would attack me for even saying that. I don't, but um, I don't. I don't think that he's up for it. I, mean, I don't think he's standing for election to prime minister. Uh, I heard the people being discussed on other sites. Um, Brutus's site and on uh, Iron Duke's site, and none of them sounded interesting to me. Brutus was was talking about how um, he thinks it's wrong for people to abandon conventional politics, and I I'm not I'm not telling people that they should abandon conventional politics. If for no other reason, then it provides um, a platform to speak, even if you don't come close to being elected. You know, it's a possibility to articulate uh, our positions at least somewhat. Um, so Anne Marie Waters stepped down. She's a nice lady, but of course, you know, she's not going to go. She's not going to address the kosher question. So that. And for some reason, a lot of um, British people seem to be incorrectly to think that it, this is that this is um, overstated in concern, and they're wrong. It's not. Um, but she's, you know, she's of that kind of perspective of the Tommy Robinson that you know, you know. Uh, Islam's a big problem, but they are not. Um, I felt bad about it because she seems like a nice lady. And in, in many respects, she, she made some very good arguments. Um, I guess she'll stay involved somehow, even if her, even if her party is now defunct. But if you can't address that issue, you're really, you're not helping people. They're not going to know what's going on unless they can be critical of that issue. But like I said, that that has to be right up there, um, along with our traitors and, and, and our people who are indifferent to our destruction, the right-wingers and the liberals. Um, not only because it's true, but if, if we don't address it from a platform that is decidedly against Nazism, then the Nazis can claim that they only, that they only, that they're the only ones who take this serious issue seriously and that they're the only ones who handle it correctly when that's decidedly not true either. Um, okay. What else was in the news? So yeah, we talked about Orville. I think I think that my I'm happy with re my remarks uh, with regard to him and, and his uh, podcast. Um, who are the elitists? Uh, Patrick says that he knows that. Keith Woods won't talk to me. Well, who cares? I don't. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I wonder where Mirth Baron's been. He hasn't been around for a couple weeks now. It is summer. People have lives to live. <clears throat> um. Yeah, but I was yeah, I was um I reflected on Norvin's comment that uh 
uh, women going to sperm banks don't want sperm coming from men who are less than six feet tall. And I think it's a, it's a backwards approach. Um, I'm approaching it, and I, and I recommend that he approach it to be the one who's, who's the judge. Um, and first of all, to reject anybody who says that it's impossible. That's nonsense. That's like saying that there's such a thing as incels when anybody who can scrape together $50 is not an incel, right? Well, <clears throat> anybody who has resource, like Norvin's mother does, uh, for example, um, and therefore him, can find a woman who will have a baby for you. And if you're going to leave this world, of course, you know, and you're a fighter like we are, you want to, you want to leave your children to continue in your line. So to begin with, I understand that it's not, it's certainly not impossible. I mean, you look at, you look at these women who are having <laughs> babies when they're 15 years old with whomever drug addicts and, and uh, prostitutes and whatnot. So there are women who will have babies for next to nothing and certainly for a price so that they can get their fentanyl fix or whatever the hell they're into. So that's just starting to put the position, you know, is there life in outer space? Probably yes. Well, are there women who will have a baby for you? Yeah, there's got to be. So maybe, maybe not even a white woman. There's, there's a woman somewhere in the world. There's, there's a woman who will, who will take the cash in order to have a baby. And might have other reasons too. Maybe just one of them, whatever. And then you move, then you move on and you become, knowing that it's a possibility for sure, then you become more selective and try to do the best, you know, the best you can in finding a mother, perhaps a surrogate, perhaps even a woman who uh, will be in a normal relationship with you, be your, your wife or your woman, mother, she mother, you father. Um, and, and I think that one thing that will really help is getting over this idea. One thing that's been, it's been an obstruction to me early on, not so much as I get a bit older, my 20s, 30s, but early on especially, uh, the concept of pure love was befuddling. And it's just so mystifying and so obstructive to practical thinking about the matter. It doesn't mean that you don't really like someone you, you that you don't it doesn't even mean that you kind of like don't love them it, it's just that taking practical matters into consideration is but there's no avoiding that anyway in friendships pure friendship you know expecting pure loyalty you, you, there's always there's always practical reasons why you're in any relationship and that's not necessarily bad and that doesn't um and that if you're of use to somebody that's not necessarily bad either um i think that we really have to kind of destroy this <clears throat> this concept this notion of pure love as it hangs over and inhibits practical thinking about what you want and need in a potential relationship or don't want. Um, so I'll tell you the truth. <clears throat> right now, being a bachelor, um, if I'm to be honest, it's wonderful. I, I mean, I really like it. The non-hassle. Um, again, yes, I would like to uh, find a woman who will 
either have the child for me or help me to find a woman who will have a child for me. But um, better no relationship than a bad relationship. I would say that too. <laughs> if Mark Leida interviewed me for uh, Soft White Underbelly and asked me you know, what lessons I've learned from, the, from life, that's that's one I would put up there among many. Better no relationship than a bad relationship. Doing a solo. What does Tom White say? Don't have to ask permission if I want to go out fishing. I sleep until the crack of dawn. <laughs> it's great to be a bachelor. Um, hmm. It was a it was a thought in here. <clears throat> um, something about kind of really it was on the order of bachelorhood, but. Uh, One good thing about the potential of surrogacy, it's, and I mean surrogacy in the sense not that not that you keep the baby, but the Ukrainian way, that the, the mother keeps the baby. Um, it doesn't require so much, <clears throat> for me anyway, that... Um, I could, uh, me to have to pretend that a woman I don't find all that attractive is so attractive to me. I, mean, I don't have to sleep with her. I don't have to, um, try to protect her ego. Um, I don't have to share her interests, care about what she cares about. I don't have to be insulted that she doesn't care about what I care about so much. Um, it's preferable. It's, it's more preferable that, that she be intelligent than beautiful, I suppose, in terms of life, life uh, chances. But she doesn't have to be the most of either necessarily because I don't have to <laughs> I don't necessarily have to live with her and um, it's an advantage I know and I know it, it is bad and it, I'm talking about you know um, the starting point at the bottom line uh, it is bad and that you're in a sense contributing to the pool of, of uh, single mothers, but not necessarily because a guy like me or, and probably a guy like Norvin is not going to, uh, allow the child to be unsupported to the, the best of his ability. So long as he's alive, even if he doesn't live with the woman and, uh, he's not in a normal, a normal relationship with her. You can still father the kid. Provide the best mentoring and support that he can. And things that a father does. Um, as I've said before, it's true that some of the worst people in the world are people who grow up without a father. They don't have that super ego uh, restraint that a father applies, that, that, that uh, hand of restraint that a father applies. No, you can't do this. They only have the unconditional love of their mother and they become 
sociopaths thinking they're just entitled to everything and not having no social consciousness. The father tends to instill that inhibition, which my father did a bit too much, which really was a double whammy when I went up against these people from Piwa, Poland, who grew up without biological fathers, because they both loved and, th and thought the world of themselves, had no social constraints on them, and were completely uninhibited, whereas I was overwrought with social inhibition as a result of my father's crazy inhibition. My sister's, well, my, my, my sister channeling that with her feminism. This, that's, a, that's kind of digressing a bit, but I did, I did um, something settled a bit recently about my uh, late sister's kind of negative impact on my uh, social skills that whatever means of manipulation uh, her feminist means of manipulation was to angrily say, I don't know. You ask her a question. Um, if you ask my father a question, this was like, you know, for, how dare you? It would be met with rage. It was like some, some simple question. Um, and my sister would be that way too. I don't know. Um, I don't know, I don't know. And she would say to me, for example, and it wasn't always done with with hostility. It was just like an ongoing sort of weapon of obfuscation. She, she would say to me, um, the guys who get girlfriends are guys who have girlfriends. I don't know why it is that way. And I, this befuddled me. Because I didn't really necessarily want to be that way of just, you know, the ladies man going through women, even if I could. And yet I felt like I did, you know, kind of want a girlfriend, right? But to have a girlfriend, you have to have maybe a girlfriend that you don't like so much or something, or or not be too picky, all this kind of shit. And she didn't know why. My sister was, well, she was intelligent in some ways, enough to be a lawyer having passed both the New York and New Jersey bar exams at first try. She was kind of shallow in other ways. And that was just one example. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. So, you know, all of my older siblings were that way. Um, these kind of loose sexual standards. You know, my brother Tom, oh, it's just about dumping your filthy load. You know, oh, it's so funny. You know, it's about, oh, it's about getting your rocks off. It's like, ew. My oldest brother Larry was was that way too. He's like, oh, line him up. Oh, I mean, and I look at them. My older siblings, are you such great specimens that you can have this celebrative attitude about sex and free love when, in this atmosphere, you know, rife with hatred towards white people and our treasure and you know, staunch advocacy of blacks who are like predators on the situation um well, to say that was uncomfortable was a vast understatement um really you know it took a it's very complicated to and without any without much but just about any confirmation that this is not necessarily something I wanted to do, <laughs> to play a game or something, but that I, I wanted to get to a society where uh, my ethnic genetic interests were not at risk. And that 
the women I viewed as treasure generally, and the one to be my wife specifically was not, you know, under a, pervas a pervasive circumstance of predation by people who had nothing that I want that I wanted in offer of exchange. You probably know who I'm talking about, for one thing. Um, but in that circumstance of America, you, you know, to function uninhibitedly, you really have to take an objectivist position. If you're going to be a liberal, you have to take an, an objectivist position. Well, with the background um, denial and, and uh, su false self-assurance that you know, the, the best and the strong will uh, come about through this rough and tumble pen, pen mixia. Okay. <laughs> the viewership is going down. That's right. I these things that I'm saying are, are um actually pretty important, but by the same token, um I'm trying to fill time because uh StreamYard doesn't re renew until, for another five days. And if I leave the screen, um, excuse me, if I leave the stream, I won't be able to stream more until then. And I prepared myself for a very long stream today um, for the occasion that I would have uh, interlocutors. I don't really care that much if I don't. Um, as I said, it might be better to leave the stream alone as it is, uh, as a nugget unperturbed by, a, a resource unperturbed by uh, random inter interlocution, which is likely to stray into irrelevancy and to, to annoy me. IC3, I don't want to talk to you today. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I see you there. Um, one of the reasons why I don't want to talk to you today is that um, I'm trying to engage, first of all, our European peoples. It's not that I, it's not that I don't recognize that you as um, an African guy have a perspective that uh, at least claims to have some ways that are respectful of our, of our capacity as Europeans to maintain ourselves. I saw you on my, I think it was you on my Twitter the other day, and I scrolled, I scrolled through your Twitter timeline, and um, I saw some things that were irritating to me and they're the kind of things that I don't want to, uh, that are exactly why I, I came to Poland, like to, to get away with, to be with my people. Um, just for an example, you had a picture there of Eddie Murphy. Now I find very, Eddie Murphy um, very unfunny. And Mark, notably because um, uh, he's got a beautiful white wife Paige Butcher, right, who's had now, what, a couple mulatto kids with him. And this is after Eddie Murphy has already had several kids with other women, with black women. Um, and I remember a time when you wouldn't see that. 
you wouldn't see a guy like Eddie Murphy with a woman like Paige Butcher. I never got used to it, and I don't intend to get used to it. Um, and as I said, I don't, I don't treat it as a light matter. I don't think it's. I don't. To me, it's not funny. Um, the amazing thing is to me is that there's not more anger and objection about it coming from European peoples, white peoples. And that, uh, yeah, that the, the voices are silent. I know that black women don't tend to like it. Not that they give a damn, but <laughs> what they think, but uh, that's true too. These people, these these white women who are liberals on on that score, pretend to be so uh, so sensitive and so uh, concerned for you know black people and and, and about uh, the injustice of anti racism. And what do they care about? What black women think? They don't. These black guys like Eddie Murphy either. And it's really a horrible thing that we as white guys, we're not even allowed to talk. Can you imagine? And yet, I'm supposed to be privileged, right? Can't even, can't even say anything for the most part. So no, when I saw him in, in your in your timeline on Twitter, I blocked your Twitter account and I and I um you know it's okay. We'll put that we'll put talking with him off for a good while. You know, he's gonna go to to speaker's corner. Well maybe he should be able to talk or I don't know. Okay, so I'll put the link there in case somebody else does want to join. Now, it's, it is getting to be uh, too late in certain parts of the United States. What time would it be? And in the East Coast of the United States, definitely, well, unless you're a person who keeps strange hours like I, I do, it's, what, 5 o'clock in the morning? Oh, yeah. In Chicago, it's 4 o'clock, which is even more weird. And in Los Angeles, it's uh, no. In Denver, it's three o'clock, and in Los Angeles, it's two o'clock in the morning, I guess. But on a Saturday night, that can be that can be a reasonable hour. Um, in Japan at six o'clock in the evening. And in England it is ten o'clock in the morning, which is quite quite reasonable time. I'm really ha I'm not um I'm actually really happy with 
the way this platform is developing and making sense of things consistently showing where problems are coming from and suggesting paths to sovereignty Seamus asks, who are the people of Dan Ocean County? It's, my people are European peoples. That's why that's why I advocate. I advocate European peoples, uh, not only because of my peoples, but because uh, they require advocacy. Um, the whole prospect of anti-racism is basically anti-Europeanism. It's aimed at uh, an antagonism. European peoples and uh, in disregard for even the most destructive consequences of these policies. So yes, those are my people and those are where I advocate. I That doesn't mean, of, well, obviously, that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm for European peoples when they're traitors, when, they, <coughs> when, they're, when they're trying to harm other European peoples. But I don't consider that, you know, that's not an expression of our in group behavior. Don't speak of ill of the dead. I'm sure she was good. My sister was good in some ways, and she was bad in some ways, like everybody. Don't you want to, same as Crawford asked, don't you want to find a person to share your life with? Um, if if I can make that happen, if you know, if she's a good person to me, yeah, that would be fine. Um, but as I said. One of the big lessons that I've learned in life is better no relationship than a better relationship. Oh, I re you reminded me in asking that question of another thing that I would say to Mark Lida if I was interviewed for a soft white under underbelly. That'd be one. Better no relationship than a bad relationship. The other one is don't beat yourself up for thoughts that come to your mind. People have generally talked, been ill-advised to talk in terms of feelings. You know, it's thoughts. Don't beat yourself up for thoughts that come to your mind, whatever they may be. It's just a thought that comes to your mind for you to apprise as feedback. And do with what you will. Uh, you know, criticize it. Rejected, if you want, um, but it's you are not blameworthy and, and ultimately condemnable for a thought coming to your mind. Now, one thing that makes that happen, uh, or make one think that one it can be bad just for having thoughts is the uh the christian text i think it's in the sermon on the mount where jesus says uh even if you think of breaking the ten commandments you may as well have done it uh mrlic3 says uh does Daniel Sienkiewicz see celtic nordic germanic and slavic ic1 people as his people yes i see all European people as my people. We're not all the same, and I value our, our uh, distinct nationalities. I enjoy the differences. I want to maintain the differences. Uh, not, on, not only for the... Uh, the enjoyment of it, but for the practicality of it, 
as a unit of analysis, as, or excuse me, as a unit of governance and uh, human ecology and uh, accountability. Um, and because I think that if you try to broach these differences, you try to rupture these differences, that, that uh, you're going to be in for a very destructive, perhaps a violent backlash. And, that's, and it's the road to run away, even if you, if you do. Um, that's not to say that I'm a purist either, you know, a modicum of breeding between European peoples is probably a good thing, but just it has, it can't be too much. Does Daniel Shinkevich accept Turkish people as a European people? Where they're Europeans, there are some uh, percentage of European in Turkey, and there's some that are clearly Middle Eastern. But on the whole, no, I don't see the Turks as Europeans. So some are. I mean, there's, and some are quite benign. You know, are not are not bad people at all. Maybe I shouldn't go there too quickly, but there are, <laughs> there are some Turkish women that are quite beautiful. Um, not that it wouldn't, you know, the way things are, wouldn't work out more the other way, probably. That is to say, Turkish men taking European women more so, but... Um, I don't know if it's... <laughs> it's one... That's one idea of Richard Spencer's that may not be the worst, taking an, actually an, an aggressive attitude towards Constantinople. We take it for Europeans. They de <laughs> Turkey should definitely not be in, in the European Union. I, do, I forget what percentage, but it was a, a fairly low percentage of European genetics. The last study that I saw, I don't know how accurate it was, was it like between 10 and 20 percent European. But there's, there, definitely, there definitely are white people in, in Turkey. And some of it may be the result of, of, uh, of white slavery even, or you know, Russian women going there and so on. <clears throat> Ukrainian women. But uh, you know, Islamic. That's, that's a, there's a problem for you. And this Erdogan and his threat and threatening to flood Europe. He said some. He said some evil things to Erdogan. In his intentions for Europe, no, Turkey should not be in the European Union. And uh, basically, they're not European people now. Although, I I, uh, I prefer them to some other non-whites, personally. Well, you see, by British standards, the Turkish people are considered IC2 white people, but the Kurdish people are considered to be IC6 Arab Middle Eastern. I don't, I don't see that um, that metric, the, the IC2 and IC6, as uh, the final word. It's just one way of dividing things, I, and I don't, I doubt that I, it would be exactly my way of dividing things. Um, I begin. I 
can become particularly prickly there as I maybe wrongly from certain historical perspectives, but basically I, I side with the, um, I tend to be sympathetic to the Kurds as a nation without a political, a politically recognized nation boundaries and the people who've been uh, <clears throat> attacked, genocide, deprived their rightful land, like in Eastern Turkey, where Eastern Turkey is, for example, and uh, <coughs> some other places. I know that, that um, Dugan had some really vile things to say about the Kurds. I don't know. I, I don't know a, a great deal about it, but in talking to Kumiko, who does, she said basically there's there's a good kind and a bad kind of, of uh, Kurdish nationalism. But I I don't see them as an enormously alien people. I don't not I don't even know if they're I don't I don't have a lot of experience I don't have any, I've never been to Turkey so I don't know but. So like I said, I know there's some white people in Turkey. Um, so maybe I'm not making this distinction enough, but I don't see them as so much more exotic than, than the Turks, actually, the Kurds. Pretty white, almost. Almost. I know Nordicists might, might uh, object to that, but... I have enough Southern European in me to sympathize with some of the, <laughs> the people. Oh my God, the, the person has brown eyes. They're not white. To sympathize with not some of the uh, Northern European ridiculousness. Oh, they're not, they're not blonde. They're not white. Look, they have cheekbones. They're not white. How would Daniel Sienkiewicz divide in contrast to the British racial and ethnic system? I, I would uh, divide it by, by the, the nations, by the nations of Europe. That's how I would divide it. For the most part, there, there are some subdivisions there, but uh, yeah. Germans, Italians, Swiss, Polish, French, Danish. Norwegian, English, Scottish, Southern Irish, Northern Irish, Welsh, French, Spanish, Basque, Portuguese, Austrian, Croatian, Serbian, Slovenian, Slovakian, Czech, Hungarian, Romanian, Bulgarian, Macedonian, Greek, Swedish, Finnish, Estonian, Latvian, Lithuanian, <clears throat> Russian, Belarusian, Ukrainian, <laughs> Luxembourgian, maybe. And the mixed kinds in di diaspora, or the non mixed kinds in, in diaspora outside of Europe.
Did I forget any European countries? I don't think so. Um, uh, Moldova. <clears throat> Albanian. I forgot about Albanians. Um, Montenegrin. <laughs> Never heard that before. Um, yeah, that's how I do it. But yeah, I mean, some people, you know, and this is a problem with the Nordicists. They want to say, oh, the Northern French are totally different than the Southern French. Well, maybe they are, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't divide it that way. Maybe because I like them both. And, uh, you know, I don't like the way this Northern, I really, really, I think I, with good reason, don't like the way this Northern European division has a tendency to throw Southern Europeans under the bus. It's bad. Very bad. So I wouldn't, even though, yeah, I mean, okay, there's, there might be more Germanic and other genes in the north of Italy. I would not let them take our Southern European genetics away as they are intermixed with the northern italians uh, you know i i've been all over italy and in, in the north as well and i don't recognize this difference as as nearly as marked as uh the nordicists would like to make of it So if you're in the north of, north of, uh, north of Italy and you want to identify as uh, German, then go to Germany. It's not to say that there's not ad, ad mixtures in, in, in all the countries. There are, and so on. Basically, I like them all, and yeah, and that's 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 uh, essentially how I do it. And for those who are mixed, I, I'd say that you know you'd be classified as European in Europe or in diaspora of the genus European, not necessarily a specific kind. Yeah, I don't like this northern, northwestern European, northern, you know southern that stuff in this you know for whatever they're concerned about you know, the nordicists are concerned to maintain their their kind it's th that's taken care of by nationalism you're concerned with preserving your northwest european kind well that that's subsumed within british nationalism english nationalism scottish nationalism Welsh nationalism, so on. And and the good thing about it is that it doesn't create this arbitrary line in the center of Europe to where other people who are Europeans are being treated as an outside group. On the contrary, they'll be treated as a, an, another European nationality to be cooperated with, who are in the fact, should be cooperating with who have similar problems and, and the same antagonists who are subjecting, subjecting them to the same, you know, putting them under the same gun of anti-racism. So, yeah, that's the way I would do it. And that's why I think that Kevin McDonald is, is uh, really wrong in, in uh, fostering that. And I think it's a it's a product of his of um, his of his scientism and trying to be too empirical. Oh yeah, the, the southern Carolina. Well, look, your your concerns for what you see as characteristic individualism and so on of of uh, northern European peoples is protected and protected better under the rubric of 
you know, the, the Northern European countries, nationalisms, which will be a part of a coalition of nationalisms, which are in mutual aid, mutual cooperation. Well, it's a bit redundant to protect those kinds and their qualities. I don't know if he was doing another stream. He, I, I told him, he, and he agreed that he'd be here for this stream. I was like, these kids, they think that they have more important things to discuss and, and uh, than what I'm talking about. They don't. It's ridiculous, but whatever. I don't even care. So we've been at it for two hours and uh, 15 minutes. We'll hang in there a little bit longer. Let's see if we can come up with somebody. The link has been sent. No, I'm not going to play you. Arval stream. I'm really satisfied with some of the points that I made early on in this podcast. And it's worth a listen to anybody. And if it, it's, uh, you'll have to bear some silence while, while I put on some coffee. My dear audience, I'll be right back.
Okay, then. Yeah, it's one of those things. <clears throat> it's a tautology. If, if, um, if people don't like me because, <laughs> because they reject Hitler and Christianity, it's like, a, you know, it's a tautology. <laughs> Fuck it. Man. I don't want you if that's your requirement. <clears throat> And of course, if you want, if you want me to, to treat the, the kosher folks as if they're one and the same part of us, no, not that either. But by the same token, again, to repeat, we're not, we're anti-supremacist. We don't see the need to exploit people. We can trade for what we need. And take care of ourselves otherwise. Um, not advocating violence, let alone genocide. Not necessary to the pursuit of our sovereignty, which is what we're after, or autonomy and sovereignty. Well, this is a, an obvious question that you ask. Yes, it's necessary to we are a European people as a genus with distinct kinds, which I call species. And that would fit the scientific definition of species too, the taxonomic. Coffee in hand, I'll put the link in again. Let's see what else was in the news? Certain things you just won't see me engage here. I said people. You know, promoting Zelensky, not a chance. Belaboring a grievance with uh, <laughs> trannies or something. It's like, come on, man. Don't waste my time. Said Per said that he'll be he'll be joining us in uh, days soon to come. He's a goodie.
When is the, the new Prime Minister of England going to be? Hi, Marshall, is that you? No Fed posting. Hey. Long time no year. How are you? Um, pretty good. Uh, yourself? Good. Good. So uh, how, how are things down there in New Zealand? Um, um, well, very draconian. Um, really? Still, still masked. We still um, required to wear masks in supermarkets, and I'm um, to all I'm, surpri I'm surprised they don't, they don't make you wear. A, they don't make you wear a burqa. What's it? <laughs> yeah. What's the name of your your uh, prime minister, the lady that? Jacinda Ardern. I don't think that she's horse faced. I think she's, <laughs> I think she's pretty good looking. Even if she is an asshole, she's pretty good looking. Yeah, but I'm, I'm surprised she doesn't make you wear a burqa. That's true. Are they make you wear yeah, masks? they're planning to they're planning to lift the um, mandates in October. I mean, oh God, in October. Uh, yeah. No well, the, one they, they, the, the one the one good thing about that, or not so bad thing about it, is it's not really such a horrible imposition to wear a mask. It's a little bit uncomfortable behind the ears, but it's like it's not really that big of a deal. Um, it just it's just a bit it's just ridiculous. Is is the thing. I've heard it's bad for your uh, breathing, but I haven't, to be honest, I find the COVID stuff boring, so I never really investigated it. Yeah, I find it boring too. Um, Very boring. Yeah, I find medical stuff in general is kind of boring. Yeah, and and, and, and also, it's, I mean, I, I would, I, we have to even be careful about <laughs> mentioning, mentioning the word it is uh, liable to get, to cross the, uh, um, the trip, the, uh, the um, sensor wire. So you have to be careful with that. Okay. Luckily, luckily, I'm I'm like you though. I'm, I'm not even interested in the topic. It's really it's really dull. That's like I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in trannies. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. want to talk about that either. Just like you know, come on, man. I mean, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Low hanging fruit. It's not only really low hanging fruit. It's like where are they? I mean, it's like. People make a big deal out of this issue. I've known um, one. Uh, That's what I mean. Person. In, your, <laughs> you in, your life, in your life, and, and these people. Are, this is what these people are talking about. For Christ's sake! It's like the name of your um, uh, the old website you were affiliated with, Majority Rights. I mean, that was what original socialism was about. Yeah, yeah. I I, I never objected to this this title, Majority Rights. I, I thought that it was um, reasonable because. Uh, yeah, well, national social, nationalist social, because uh, the Marxists were and the later permutations of the Marxists were about uh, advocating minority rights because they would could form uh, what I call unions and coalitions um, to well, of these of these minorities to overthrow the majority nation. Well, so, like, so I so I, I saw that guest worker taking that name is was quite appropriate i thought yeah well right, like around the time of um first world war and the so-called russian revolution a lot of the uh, suffragettes were actually just like just jewish agitators but they you know they hide behind these labels because they can't call themselves jewish terrorists but marxism um because it was pre-marx socialism people like prudhon and bakunin and um that's seriously overlooked um I tried reading some of it. It's just very, like, archaic and like kind of hard to understand. <laughs> but um, like the the main problem with um, Marxism, which really, I mean, it was really Marx's mentor Moses Hess who came up with a lot of the ideas. Um, the main problem is that it distinguishes between the proletariat, working class, and the bourgeoisie, middle class. But, but in fact. It was the rich industrialists who owned the companies who were oppressing the working class, not the bourgeoisie. So yeah. 
I think that it was kind of a, a Jewish um, dialectic. They, they, to wanted to pre- to they wanted to prevent. They wanted to okay, prevent. Try, try to say kosher. Try to say kosher. Oh, sorry. I'm so I'm so accustomed to saying the J word. Um, yeah, I'll say like kosher or whatever. Yeah, they wanted to prevent an alliance between the working classes and the middle classes. Yeah, yeah, those, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, and, and also they they put uh, they put uh, a lot of pressure on these managerial class. In between, you're getting fire breathed down your neck from the, from above, pressure from the, the workers below, and it turns them into really some of these these managers can become terrible people as a result of that squeeze. If you if, if you've had to work for some of them, like I have, it's like ah, nightmare. But yeah, um, I, that, yeah, I I can agree that, that that you're making sense there. Yeah, well, a lot of them were, were uh, hypocrites too. I mean, Marx came from a very rich um, family. I mean, connected with the the Phillips, you know, the famous um, uh, company that manufactures like you know oh, electronic yeah. products. Um, they make they make crummy electronics. They're here in. Um, they were in they were in Pua, Poland, where this uh, where I had this bad experience with a lot of a lot of people. And matter of fact, one of these girls who works for the uh, who was instrumental in orchestrating bringing a mafia contingent against me is now works for um, she's a, a quite naturally a uh, human resources manager at Philips Lighting in, in Pua. Yeah, well, that's a bit of digression, but I just I had, for my own personal sake, I had to throw that in there. She's not. She's not kosher. She's just an asshole. <laughs> yeah. What's your opinion well, a lot, on a this? People, a lot of people. A lot of people would envy her being there in New Zealand. This like kind of wonderland, tropical wonderland. I don't know. Um, I think all of the the whole um, Anglosphere was kind of very like there. There's these very authoritarian measures. Like same with um. Canada and like well, was kind of yeah. Well, we're talking about two different things. I mean, I'm just talking about the the, the you're just talking about like the land proper, right. not about the politics. Right, right. Oh, the housing market here is very expensive, um, especially in um like the bigger cities. Is it driven up by the Chinese immigration? There's just a lack of um, the demand way exceeds the supply for for housing. That should be good for the builders' market, wouldn't it? Yeah, it is. The building industry. Is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, what's your opinion on this uh, ethno state business uh, in America? Because this is kind of a, a school of thought. They want to establish an ethno state. But um, I had, well, you know, well, my, my, question, my question has always been. How are you? How is are you going to establish it in such a way as it's not going to get crushed by, like the federal government, like the military? And they can. That's a question they've never been able to, to answer. Okay. Well, I think I think that I can basically answer it. it it's uh, um, it's pretty general, but I think that I can. First of all, um, I don't like the. I never like the idea of ceding territories. For example, the southeast of the United States to um, Africans. I don't think that is. For one thing, they don't deserve it. But also these. These areas aren't just beautiful; they're also uh, strategically important. Like as they border on, um, for military reasons, on, on the Gulf of Mexico and Florida, but also, um, yeah, it's hold on, I'm almost finished. They don't. Uh, it's too. The problem with with that is that they're they're still too wedded to the idea of physical land boundaries, whereas. This concept of the Euro DNA nations uh, goes in, goes, you know, uh, establishes uh, our genetics, our people as our, our nation, wherever they, wherever we are, um, so that um, we are afforded more, more strategic flexibility to uh, stake our, our claims wherever we can. And not feel the need to uh, permanently cede anything, any not the cities, yeah. not 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 regions, 
to anybody. We don't have to. We don't have to bargain with them. We just go our own way and pursue our own interests. And it, we connect with people in New Zealand, anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think people are too fixated, too fixated on like land and, and territory. And you got to remember, like um, some countries like um Germany and Italy were only unified in like the late eighteen hundreds. Like it's quite recently. Like if you look at a that's right. That's there's, right. there's a vid there's a video of um like uh, a map of Europe and a timeline, and it's amazing. Like um. Like back in time, um, Lithuania that was actually the largest country in Europe, you know. Yeah, the Pol Polish Lithuanian Empire. Yeah, yeah, that's. And, that's but um, and 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 Carolyn Yeager was saying she was like criticizing. Oh, uh, I don't like her. <laughs> she, was she was criticizing Poland as this new nation that was only formed around nine ninety eight. Well, so was Germany. <laughs> you know, I mean. I, we all were we're all we're all pretty new nation wise maybe maybe england's a bit older but most of the nations are not that old i mean in terms of yeah. their, their modern uh, uh boundaries and it's not that important you know it really, it, you know because they're just, it's just a a practical way of maintaining our, our our particular kinds our human ecologies we want we want to maintain the the english kind uh and the the German kind and, and the French kind, so this this is a good way to do it. Uh, these these borders as they are. It makes sense to unite as well. Like, I mean, something like the European Union, like that idea makes sense. Like, um, for example, no, the, like the First World War, there were um nationalism was um, you know, um, promoted and propagandized. It, but if Europe had been unified kind of um maybe in a similar way to the usa or um well they tried with the, they, they tried with the, the the league of nations but it was all this it wasn't nationalism that made the problem or it was a kind of imperialism and, and chauvinism and, and antagonism um yeah uh, it's um uh, it's history at any rate but yes some sort of uh and i was even agreeing with the colored guy here that uh um uh, which is MRIC3, that uh, something like a League of Nations, which helps to coordinate the uh, the nations, would be necessary. Yes, that's what that's what I'm referring yeah. to when I when I refer to the genus of Europeans. Yeah, and the species would be the you know the particular nations. But I because I, I I don't know if you're like me, but I I I want to I want to preserve not only our our general. Uh, Europeans kind, but also our particular d distinctions. Um, uh, I, th I think are not only valuable, but it, it it's it, it runs into dangerous territory if you try to ignore these differences. It, it, um, yeah, that that would bring conflict as soon as anything. Yeah. Uh, the the international elves. Um, see their see their nation is not geographical. They're like a layer. Kind of like what Christendom was like. They're kind of like um, a layer yeah. over the world um, with yeah. headquarters. It's like you know, like they're kind of concentrated in capital cities and you know st That's stuff true. like that. But, um, the thing is, when you have a situation like that, well, if you have well like said, a single, you. if you have like a single isolated like ethno state, then the the elf people can kind of draw on the rest of the world's resources to to gang up and destroy it. Right, and then that's so one, that's one of the big advantages of the DNA nations. Again, is that it's it's you know it's uh, dispersed throughout the world. Uh, are, we we too are not easy to pin down to one particular place and, and uh, vulnerable as such to to one particular to uh, yeah snubbed out in and snuffed out in one particular spot. Yeah, exactly. So we have we have that going for us, and we've got numbers that they don't have as well. So we we do we definitely have uh, some possibilities and advantages. Were you uh, are you coming from Patrick's stream just now? I saw you live earlier. Um, 
I don't like that um dingo guy, so I didn't go on um Northern Stream. But they had um Northern O V Patrick. O V was there. Oh, and um who else? Um K D and Vanilla Mask. And now it's Northern O V Dietrich, who's an Australian oh. K D. Well, well, if if OB but definitely that a lot of the stuff they espouse definitely like turns turns away newbies, <laughs> and I know like as as someone who's like Gen Z, like I definitely know like yeah, you don't want to like that stuff's gonna make people run run for the hills. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm I'm disappointed that that um, Morgan would continue to entertain Ov and Patrick. I, the, the first part of my stream was about that, discussing. I mean, isn't it fairly obvious that that stuff's not like palatable, like especially to, to like younger people? It like, should, it should, but not, uh, not to anybody, to anybody, not just younger <laughs> people, to older people, to anybody. Um, uh, yeah, oh, and, I and, really and, don't and, like and, and, and I and despite his otherwise intelligence, I, I was taking issue with Patrick for the same reason early on in the stream. It's a long discussion, and it's a good discussion, um, but um, you know. I, I hope that they come around, but they're not likely to come around with my um, through my um, urging. It's probably going to have to happen if it happens at all through their own uh, realization that it's not working. Because um, sooner or later they're going to be confronted with the reality, and, and uh, that's why I don't, I'm not too like I don't care that much about Ov Fuck You because you know eventually he's going to be confronted with the reality and. Um, the, the only problem for now is that so long as people are, you know, telling that line and, and acting like true believers, it's going to make hard, make it hard for European peoples to coordinate because they're not going to, they're not going to coordinate under that rubric. It's not going to happen. No. And, it, and, and it's a shame because nobody's against the Germans or Ger not even against German nationalism. And I'm not trying to make Germans feel guilty about the history. I'm trying to move forward and and, and work f for all European peoples in our interests. So, the, the, you know, there's no real excuse for someone like Ov to be attacking me because I don't, I don't where he is. I don't go where he or anybody anybody else who's advocating quote national socialism and try to and troll them and hassle them. I don't go there. I've created a stream where we say, okay, we don't do this here. This it's. It was a mistake, as I see it, for X, Y, and Z reason, and let's move on to a platform that that you know, uh, wh which we can all cooperate on, and and I and so I'm not. There's no real reason for him to be um, attacking me because you know it's like I, I've all I've done is created a space where we say, okay, not here. You know, you can go to, Ovi can go to. His other sites where they are into that. Go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Yeah. Um, I was disappointed with the um, the GDL. I mean, they started off um, basically. Well, that, was um, that was an op. That was an op. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. But the th the, now, I mean, they're like um, just well. These, just, these um, ops are they're all, they're all manned by intelligent people. They wouldn't be hired by uh, alphabet agencies otherwise because I, I said to them how hey, i wrote this book the war against g you know it's right up your alley you should like it and then they banned me from from their telegram group for promoting the book and it was that's that that was a huge red flag to me like they're, they're just like but probably intelligence yeah because why wouldn't they i mean like it's a good like good i mean i'm not like i'm i'm tooting my own horn but it is a good book to like recommend to newbies it's a new up-to-date book like um I, I don't know so that was that was very suspect well yeah, and that's the, the the fact that the suspect is cross-referenced as, as well I, I forget but they were it's been a while since i rejected them or, or, and, but uh they were they were um they came to my awareness as uh as um false opposition uh, a while ago yeah the GDL. People, well, the people are calling them, just, you know, just just think of their name, the Goyam Defense League. It's like, 
you know, what what white people would name themselves that? They wouldn't. But norm, normal and the activism, like they had, like some of the activism, um, for instance, they like put a banner over a highway saying, you know, the, the Jays suck baby penis, like referring to the oral circumcision thing. But it's like nobody knows what that means. Like it's just going to turn people well, away. Well, the kosher folks do. And and the, the kind right. of people who, but, who, but the average who, person is just going to say like those people are anti Semites on with the Jews, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So so very very it's, it's, that, it's, that's it's, probably it's, the the biggest problem with this movement is just bad marketing. I'd say hands down is just sometimes they have good intentions but like just really bad like presentation. Well, a lot of it really really is. Um, at the encouragement of our uh of the kosher folks themselves stuff like yeah. stuff like stuff like me mike enoch does with his with his uh roman salutes and, and snookering richard spencer into that that you know that they're encouraging they want to encourage it that that association and like i said last time uh britney uh britney uh, what's her name over at um uh at um, Boober, Britain, uh, at um, politically provoked, pre politically provoked. She she won't talk to me uh, because well, she won't even interview. You. No, she won't interview. She, I because, think she because, 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 interviewed anybody just for views. Like she she didn't even. She said she would, she but she won't. No, but she won't because I'm not because I'm not uh, uh, fulfilling her. You know the. Uh, the right wing role that she wants to, right? She wants to put people in, <laughs> put people in boxes. They want to keep people as identifying as right, dissident right, neither right nor left. That's that's the key. Um, so that's part of their plan, and that's what they do. Uh, anyway, yeah. So I, I, are you? You said you're on the South Island or the North Island of New Zealand? South Island. And it gets cold down there. Um. Uh, kind of mild you, most of the year. Like at the moment, it's um been raining. Um, like past month or so, we maybe get snow like only once or twice a year though. I, I mean, it's kind I, of like I, it's kind of in the Pacific, but it's also close to Antarctica, kind of. So it's. I think yeah, overall it's kind of mild climate. Nice. Kind of like the UK actually, come to think of it. Well, I guess the ocean warms it up some. Do um I think I asked you this before, but I but um I forgot. Uh what how difficult is it to get to uh French Polynesia from there? <laughs> because you know, just interested in in, in a seeing these, these exotic places like Bora Bora and Tahiti and, and uh, Maria. Oh, I have no so, idea. Is, is there any is there any reasonable, reasonably inexpensive way to get there from, from New oh, Zealand? I don't know. Um, people usually holiday in Fiji or Samoa, those Pacific islands. French I guess they're pretty much... I don't know much about that um, French Polynesia. Fiji and Samoa and... Uh, and um, yeah, what's the other one? Tonga. Uh, there's like a well, bunch. Those, of, those, like, are, those are pretty beautiful places too. Well, there's a bunch. There's like Solomon Islands, Vanuatu. Yeah. Um, there's, um, a, there's, there's the other island that everybody goes to. So I'm forgetting. New Caledonia. No. Is that part of French Polynesia? That I'm, that I'm forgetting. Um, Oh, never mind. I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna whip out my map. But I, I heard of a guy, a German guy, I was talking to when I was hostling, saying that he found a way to uh, get on a a freight boat from New Zealand to French Polynesia. I think but he did. What if, got, what if he got caught though? You know, probably get arrested. No, he, he did it legally. Um, Are you allowed to do that? What? He was somehow. 
you'd have to eat and stuff though so how did he was he just like hey guys like just part of the crew like <laughs> i don't know how he did that he did so do you know about um, go on do you know about north Saints new island yeah yeah the, the, those yeah. those natives who uh the Indian killed, Ocean. They killed, they killed that one guy who was washed up, and they, they, yeah, they um, the, see they've um, I think they're very um, yeah, they've they've basically uh, I don't know what like Stone Age or whatever. I think they have metal, uh, they have like spears and arrows, but very um, kind of primitive, isolated on that island. But yeah, there was a, f a couple of years ago there was a missionary who went there. And um, they like <laughs> they speared him. <laughs> what about what about Rockefeller? Imagine that getting off the boat and just getting speared. God. What about what about Rockefeller who washed up on the um, shore of Java and got eaten by the cannibals? Oh, I heard son. about that. Yeah, Rockefeller's son. It's on. It's an NPR story. They they tell it. There's some some author wrote about it. It's really interesting. At first, he went that it was all naive. It's like, oh yeah. I'll show them how to build things and everything. And then for some reason he was out at sea, his boat broke and he drifted out to another part of the island. And they just saw him as something good to eat. Cook him up. <laughs> and it's Rockefeller, you know, it's a famous guy. Yeah. Cook Islands. That would be something to see. He was he was amazing. Some of these sailors are amazing. I don't know even how they withstand the seasickness. I I cannot. I find the ocean scary. That's that's. I, um, I don't know if it's a it's not a phobia, but the ocean like it's so deep and like unknown. Like yeah, you know, that'd be very very scary. Be like stranded in the ocean. It's reason. I think it's reasonable. So you'd support like tourism in a, in a um not, like I'm, not so. I'm not happy about it. I don't know if I would support it. <laughs> I I do see but here it is the crucial matter. The crucial issue is not even not so much land boundaries but citizenship. You control the citizenship membership and this is the issue of how we can begin to gain control of our ethnic genetic interests. You know, who is entitled to our um, social leverage, who is not, who is to be expelled from the nation, who is not to be allowed entry, how we can manage, you know, small amounts of ambiguity, not, not big amounts, but a little, you know. And um, that's, 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 the, um, that's the key issue. And that's something that we can do without, we can begin to do without the support of um, the nations as they are presently structured, land-based, and, and in terms of their bureaucratic apparatus. We can just bypass that all to, altogether, begin with, and get right to the heart of the matter of our yeah. ethnic genetic interests and begin collating and supporting it, ensuring that we have, for example, enough of the English kind and their qualities and, and securing that and so on. Um, and we don't have to worry about these nut politicians who are, who are bought off with, uh, you know, truck, truckloads of, uh, I think, of uh, usury. I think um, citizenship was, a, was that around the time of the French Revolution, I think that was introduced as a concept. Because hmm. I think I before, then, uh, before then they, like, didn't have passports or anything like that so they could just roam around um i don't know but it it it's it, um it's the way particularly as we you know understanding of genetic markers was is, is fairly recent too and and yet it yeah. doesn't make it less relevant because it's only a recent thing it's it's uh completely relevant um yeah.
it's a i was looking at um no so some of the caribbean islands have been destroyed in my opinion by the introduction of uh slaves there they never should have brought these slaves around talk about that a lot in my book um yeah the slave trade which started in the caribbean awful and, um, awful oh yeah it was horrible and the slaves weren't paid and they were tortured and and they, for, and they forced they, they for, yeah yeah and they forced the natives to intermarry with them so, such that in some and some i think it's in uh curacao that the natives are there's no pure no pure natives left they're all intermixed with with uh, africans did you see did you I see that uh, i was talking about last time did you see the uh the documentary discussing uh columbus's mother as as probably being jewish no but to my knowledge he was a, a murano uh and his yeah. real name was cristobal colon and he um yeah, he absconded from Spa uh spain in 1492 and his whole ship was a was like his crew was like um a bunch of um Sephardi uh pirates well this so, is, this i believe thing, because that corresponds with the theory not only from like critics of critics from afar but even even uh Eli Wiesel, the big like you know Holocaust survivor guy, he was saying that that uh, he and others are, are saying that uh, this was part of the movement, um, a horizontal transmission from the uh, as a response to Isabella's the, the Spanish Inquisition, in which uh, the Jews were given a, a choice: either convert to Christianity. Uh, leave the country or or be killed and so, and so uh columbus who was very sympathetic to the jewish ancestry of his mother saw a new haven in diaspora for jews uh out through the passage to india that he sought um and it also so it corresponds to the horizontal transmission theory from egypt to babylonia and the the, the roman uh, conquest and then the pogroms, the Spanish Inquisition, and the Holocaust, sending the, the Jews across the border, uh, and you know they're such that uh, yeah, it, 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 it's entirely in keeping with that idea, and also the idea of uh, the Abrahamic religions being imperialist, as some of the yeah. guys, as some of the guys have, have said, you guys have said that uh, you know, like Islam and christian function as a sword and shield to um uh the the israeli position the jewish uh imperialist position which uh and so columbus lands in the new world with a cross he plants the cross and a uh, a gallows there he begins uh a tirade against the the uh, native caribs the taino so i think um um uh... Columbus was like in, inveigled into a plot uh, by his his pirates, the the people um, who he's with. They like um, wanted them to like capture slaves and bring them back to Spain, but then he ended up imprisoned. I think, and it was kind of the start of the slave trade. But the thing is, the uh, the pirates of the Caribbean were actually kosher folks. Um, well, I believe it. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, a lot of that was associated with slavery. And a lot of them were actually the Hollywood idea of like the, the freewheeling outlaw pirates is a myth. Like there were actually a lot of them were, some of them were, but a lot of them were like naval intelligence agents. Um, I and it was like, for example, uh, Port Royal in Jamaica, which was dubbed like the wickedest city in the world. That was um very kosher. Even the main like thoroughfare of the, place was called j street <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i mean they, they, there's been um some research into you know the the north american slave trade like aaron lopez of course in, in providence and uh, and also the stuff in, in uh coming from holland but what most people said uh you know what some people have, have called attention to is the sort of stealthy way of ignoring the fact that the 
the predominance of the kosher slave trade was to Brazil and and uh, and, and uh, South yeah. America. This was. Yeah, I, th the, I think the main point of it was it was a big money making enterprise, you know. Um, but here's an important point: even where even where it's not kosher, it's right wing, and this is it, it's right wing in that you know it's trying to it, it's trying to imperialize and take a supremacist view and and also exclude. A normal working man's wage just just extract pure slave labor that's a right-wing thing that's not that's not left-wing that's right-wing and that's why it's important why this platform is important to distinguish ourselves from that that nonsense that that, that yeah. is distinct that is distinctly right-wing even even and and thus bad and against our interest even where it's not kosher because i'm you know i'm sure i'm sure it wasn't all Kosher people were involved in this. It wasn't, but so you know we don't we don't need it. But the point is, that's the good thing about this platform is we don't need it rhetorically. We don't need it to be entirely kosher. It you know our our right wingers, those kind they suck too. They're not they're not doing us any favor by importing you know uh, uh, millions of of uh, Africans into what could be. Uh, great habitat for us. The, they, they, they've ruined the Caribbean, right? They've ruined Brazil. I mean, yeah, just because some of these, I mean, if, if somebody's a co if somebody's kosher, it doesn't it, it make them like wor a worse person. I mean, they're like either way, I mean, they were, you know, I think that was a quite cruel what they did in the Caribbean. But well, it does yeah. help. And, and, also, and, all, and just because somebody's white doesn't make them on our side. Either. Right, that's, that's right. Exactly, yeah. But I like talking about the kosher folks because it is. Um, well, it's, I think it's the influence it's, has been. Um, it's a challenge because it's it's prohibited it's prohibited from criticizing them. So, and it needs to be done. So, yeah, but it has to be done carefully here on YouTube, for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I I now um. I I don't have any truck with this Christian stuff. I'm I used to be more diplomatic, but now I really think that. That I'm trying to reconcile criticism of the kosher folks with Christianity is just impossible, and I think it's, I, 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 under, I understand that. Uh, I, I I became I lost my patience with Christianity as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, partially, partially because they were they were they were they wouldn't stop attacking me. It's like what the fuck? They so yeah, and it's it's so it's such clear. I mean, it's a, it's such obvious bullshit. Why what why why, you, why would <laughs> yeah. it, why would you even need to debate it? It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And yet, it's it's bizarre. The really intelligent people are are. I think that the actually like, the, like 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 uh, like like um, Tyler Hamilton. This is obviously not a stupid person yet. You know, there he is with it. People who went to the moon, <laughs> Christians, and it's like it's bizarre. It's a people, you know. It just, it's strange how people can be intelligent in some ways and stupid in others. Uh, yeah. But that's the case. I think people, yeah, people. There's also a sentimental thing attached to it. Um, if people yes. are raised with it, it's hard to um, become divorced from it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And all, and all, and and also, you don't you want to be nice. And for another thing is that historically, that was a way of saying not Jewish. You say I'm Christian. I'm not Jewish. So, yeah. Right, but all the early Christians were kosher. You know, I mean the the yeah, Bible the first, was authored by right. kosher folks. You know. Saul. Yeah. Yep. It it's is. incredible to me how like um ubiquitous it is. I mean, there was a, a king of Hawaii like named King David. You know, there was like they got that like you know that there's that that you know the um, big statue in Brazil in Rio de Janeiro of, of Christ. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, just where I live, there's a lot of churches around um 
rather than some of them are quite nice like the, the architecture well, yeah yeah the, the architecture but but that's it's not just a it's a reminder of how you know this two thousand year conquest you know this, yeah and, and conquest and yoke it's terrible right but some of the churches are beautiful it's a it's a shame yeah yeah um but they could be converted into uh temples to our, our <laughs> to our peoples well a lot of churches were actually built on pagan sites too that's true Europe. too one neat one i saw is um there was a roman temple to mercury in la puy and la Le in, in france it's right on top of this really skinny tall volcanic spigot a tiny little church up there that once once was a temple to mercury that's been converted to a church but yeah um and they could i suppose they could be, could be converted back eventually some at least some of them not not necessarily to a table temple to mercury i'm not don't get me wrong i'm not promoting a, a apollonianism <laughs> don't, don't 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 get me <laughs> yeah don't mistake me for that bullshit, but uh yeah i mean you know something to a new religion concerned about our, our uh, European peoples and our and our distant cons. I don't want to be. I don't want it ever to be thought that I'm trying to do away with uh, with people's difference. I don't. You know. I don't. No. Um, Should do more uh, interviews and try to. Um, and have you tried like? Um, will they interview you? Like, um, or if you? Because I mean, I from from experience. Um, I mean, I've emailed a lot of people and very few get back, so it's quite hard to. Um, I for the most part, I've been blacklisted by people who are in the alt alt right and and uh, now it's called the dissident right um because they're they're either like big on hitler or big on jesus or they make that sort of requirement yeah. and so and so and they make the uh and so you know millennial woes won't won't interview through me or something like that um there, there's some who might did but, you see a speech about bestiality millennial woes I, yeah <laughs> I, I think that he i i think that he was trying to um I think he was trying to be philosophically sophisticated or something, and, and just failed. It was pretty stupid. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, that to me wasn't even as bad as as the one about uh, where he talked about his gay phase. I, it, he had sex with so many men that he can't even remember their names. But, but who, who cares oh, about them anyway? Like, well, I, I mean, I think it's, it's disgusting. It's his own, it's, why would it's he? His own why personal would he, shit. I mean, who cares? Why would he announce it? I mean, right. you know, first of all, I mean, it's, it's absolutely disgusting. But you know, uh, but you know, why would it be so tactless as to as to? Uh, but a lot of these people, like, they, they're not. There's no like honor. Like, they're not held accountable. Like, um, that clown Mike Enoch. I mean, he he had a kosher wife, and but now it's all hunky dory, and nobody cares now. He's still well, getting I, his shekels from his thing. Like, yeah. What? Well, he's. He, I, I. You know, he's. I, He's part of the marketing scheme from the get-go, as I suspect. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, he came out there with a portfolio from Madison Avenue that said, "You know, you know, let's get Trump elected so that he can undo the Iran deal, and let's um, and let's uh, make sure that you stay close to association with Hitler, so that white nationalism won't go nowhere, and so and make sure that you vilify, continue to vilify a characterology of the left, so that white people will never be able to." organize and conceptually unionize their people because uh it, they will never understand uh what lies beneath the depth grammar of the left they will never understand uh what post-modernity is supposed to be about in and um uh fostering the reconstruction of our forms and ways as opposed to uh as opposed to modernity and, and it's and it's a uh, universalist runaway and weaponization and against uh, uh, antagonistic and backwards forms of of, uh, of tradition, which you know, postmodernity is supposed to match the best of both, and 
the left is supposed to be about advocating our peoples and it's not where it would be wielded by our people and our nationalist interests would not be in line with this characterology where it's it's a uh, you know narrative off the track from the feedback of objective truth and and uh reality testing and and um and facts and nature it would be those these things would these uh true these truth inquiries would be feedback necessary feedback to provide to assist in the corrective the homeostatic corrective of our uh of our of our world view which in the postmodern turn that heidegger was taking among others but notably uh to recentralize what aristotle called uh praxis and that what and what he would say is should be the, our central world view um our our people our social group um because uh you know if with its politics setting about its politics as the first priority because if that's not straight then then everything else is um is for naught that uh, we have to get back to this reaction get back from this reaction this cartesian reaction uh, is estrangement into uh of of cartesian reaction to get, come back to the recentralization of the the relative interest of our people um as opposed to this reaction to the guilt trips of christianity to the the sophistry and rhetoric of the kosher folks that has sent us into this, these purity spirals looking for pure foundations that are not going to happen and but you see in people like uh semi-agog and his uh search for you know like uh <laughs> he criticizes uh the anthropocentric point of view is as, as, as if we're not you know we're supposed to identify as wolves or vegetables or something what the fuck he's talking about it's ridiculous you know but that's that's you know a clear sign of reactionary thinking that, that that you are reacting to kosher rhetoric instead of acting for the correctivity and the the um systemic homeostasis therefore autonomy and sovereignty of our people there's uh you know the the matter of homeostasis is is a, a self-corrective system an autonomous system and this is what we want to be as opposed to a reaction reaction into uh feudal quests beyond or within nature that that are not subject to uh our the the intelligence of our correctivity and um and therefore are inherently unstable and easily manipulated by the kosher folks um and subverted and infiltrated uh, and that, that's why they want they so desperately want us to maintain our identity identity as right wing and is against the against the left um and they always and they always have uh anybody who defends your any any white people would defend white people or european people has always been called right wing or far right in the moment they do that but what's new as what was new as of 2008 was this characterology of the left as the enemy and that that is something that, that came up through paul gottfried and was handed off to the, the types of like um like mike enoch and you know it is people over there like in the, the goyam defense league and and, um, and shit like that <clears throat> and richard spencer and you know the old all, all these uh whatever useful in the idiot that they could find Oh, have you seen Lauren Southern lately? She's still right there with uh, with um, Ezra Levant from uh, uh, what the fuck is the name of his Canadian thing? Uh, I've got a Twitter screenshot from her. Uh, oh, she is so full of shit. She's just kosher. Um. What's what's Ezra Vance thing called? Yeah, it's all against the left, right? It's like uh, yeah, 
Yeah, Lauren Southern on Twitter. I'm not Jewish. I just have Jewish heritage. There's a big difference between <laughs> there's wait, wait, wait. There's a big difference between religion and ethnicity. Racist idiots. <laughs> yeah, she changed her name from uh, Simonson, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Tommy Robinson on Twitter. I'm Jewish, mate. <laughs> but these people. Are like, he may, oh, well, he may as well be right. So. <laughs> like the, posing in a photo like israeli defense force t-shirt with some like ridiculous like rabbi looking guy and like some other like rat with a mossad t-shirt like you, you like the, 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 like, the thing is like, these people think that it's gonna it's gonna make them safe and, and it's always an unrequited love love it still goes to jail and it, and it comes within a hair of getting killed by uh, muslim inmates so What's the point? <laughs> yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't protect. It doesn't do you any good. Um, what's what's uh, Rebel News, Ezra Levant? I was wondering why she was able to use, in her recent video, um, what she was able to use without copyright strike, the um, David Bowie song, Rebel Rebel. Who the fuck is she? Uh, you know, it's got it's got to be big money behind her. Yeah. Yeah, Rebel Media. I remember they made a um. He made a video about uh, Trump's kosher entourage. Who? As a Levant? Yeah. Really. Yeah, and he was like, this is something I don't want conspiracy theorists to hear. All of Trump's children are either married to or dating Jews. And then he, like, goes through a list of, like, all the, um, his kosher acolytes. You know, he's just trying to get it, get on ahead of the, uh, ahead of the curve, hoping, you know, to control. Well, that's the thing, is that's chutzpah, you know, like, Oh, yeah. obvious it's obvious that that's like not fair that they should be so inordinately represented but he's just if you said that to him he'd, he'd say oh no that's like <laughs> <laughs> kyle fan in the chat he was on um, was it, Judas's was, stream too was he i guess he's a fan of uh kyle roland this obnoxious jewish kid that used to be on Luke ford streams <laughs> oh yeah Harry Potter, Jewish. Where, yeah, he did, look like, he did look like Harry Potter. That's right. Yeah. With the big glasses. Yeah, he did. I didn't think of that. Yeah, Laura Southern. And that, that thing, that borderless thing, was a disgrace. I mean, she is such a farce. Well, she's kind of capitalizing on the, you know, I'm a young, blonde, hot girl, and she's not that hot, but like, no, she's not. But she's, you know, she's doing that whole shtick. So a lot of these, like, yeah, people, it's like the same shtick as um, Brittany. Yeah. Brittany might be a bit better looking. Yeah. I haven't I haven't been there and is it still is it still functioning? I haven't been there in months. What's functioning? Britney's site. Oh well I, she got well they got booted off YouTube. Which oh, did they really? Yeah. They got up to ten K subs and then they got booted off. And then they were relegated to Odyssey, but now they she's um in bed with Nick Fuentes on uh, uh, Cozy. Co really? Cozy. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know that. That because the thing is, like, you have I didn't to know have, that Nick Fuentes was that tactless. Yeah, and you have to have his seal of approval to be allowed on that website. Wow. So, so he he approves of her. You know, and her, her, I mean, that her stuff's just really, drama. That speaks really badly of him. Which, he he um he's a classic he's a classic um paleocon you know an an inheritor of the uh the Paul Gottfried school of 
of, of Christianity and enlightenment values in a fusion, yeah. uh, which is totally a total misdirection of our interests. But uh, yeah, so he's fucked up. I'll be right back in, in uh, 30 seconds or so. Don't Fed post. <laughs> I know what. Violence time? No, it's not. Kyle Fan. Um, I don't know what happened to Mirth Baron. If you've heard him, he's, he's a really cool guy. He's a, of Irish I'm descent. Sure. He lives in England. He's of Irish extraction, though, but he's, but he's a really cool guy. Definitely on our side. Um, and he's, you know, he's not, <laughs> yeah, he checks all the boxes. Or he's all right. Per Norden, the Swedish guy should be joining us soon. You can't today. Still recovering from the malady. I know where Snorkel Blog is. I hope he comes back. Definitely not against him. Many of us start out with you know learning about uh, the kosher stuff through right wing auspices. And because, you know, in, in some senses they have to, or they feel compelled to make a study of that issue. So they're, they're going to be ahead of the curve and, and you can learn from, you can, you can learn from, from anybody, you know, just because I have, you know, many people, um, even if they have serious flaws in their outlook, have, have good things to say. Um, yeah, things you could learn from. What are what are the uh, the women prospects down there? Are you is there a, a, an Anna Arden in the offing for you? Is that her name? That we uh, premier Arden. Or, or um, same as like America and UK and shit, I'd say. Oh, not not very good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Although there, are, although there are occasional beauties that can't be beat. On the other hand. You never know. Are you, is it difficult to, uh, I mean, do you have to like not go into these issues if you're going to get anywhere with the average woman? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that generally like most younger people, it's not, they get offended. They just, they, they don't really care. Yeah. So they don't really interested in it. So like if you, if they know you believe it, they actually might be okay with it, but they just don't want to hear you talk about it for like two hours because they're not interested in it i see apathy but apathy tightens the shackles of slaves well that's that's true that's why i i, I mentioned earlier in the show uh right up there with our our you know first there's two things that two big areas of problems that have to be 
looked at on the radar screen as it as it you know makes its rounds so to speak first of course is the is the ykw but second is is as anybody with sense will note is our own not only traders but you know the the vast numbers of people who are just indifferent and don't care you know so that that is Absolutely. a big problem that's a big problem <clears throat> um well, that's, usually, that's usually characteristic of, of the liberals. They just don't care. Well, politics is like a bell curve. I mean, most people are in the middle, and they're not on either extreme. But the point about that is that also comes with a lot of apathy and a lot of indifference. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't really relate to that. It bo it's always bothered me. Uh, people don't get but it might be harder to care in new zealand where you don't have like you don't have some of the the worser kinds in your face i mean yeah chinese are bad but they're but mo mostly they're not going to be like super aggressive you know you, they'll, yeah they'll sort of not be in your face they'll leave you alone kind of thing they, they, they'll be obnoxious and they won't care about the things that you care about but they won't um they're not it's not going to be like uh sort of very night, poor a lot of them have night, very poor it's not gonna be, like, not gonna be night it's not gonna be nightwear world like like uh you know an american ghetto like chicago or something you know um, but um yeah a lot of them um speak very poor english and i wonder like how they got into the country like because i think um like, they have people who help them fill out forms and stuff so and a i guess a lot of i guess a lot of money a lot of them yeah very poor English, and they don't care. And they don't care. No, because they probably think the language is better anyway. Which I mean, English has got a lot of problems, but at the same time, like you know, if I was going to move somewhere, I'd, I'd you know, yeah. make an effort to learn language. Yeah. Well, they, they uh, yeah. By my experience with a Chinese graduate school graduate school roommates is that. Uh, really did not you know the things that are of concern to european american peoples not very much unless it's like a you know something that's the same kind of thing that will affect them They're not not too uh not too concerned what what were they more interested in money <laughs> making money well, uh, yeah i mean they chinese pop, people pop I mean, they I'll Chinese do. people, they like gift, uh, they, they um, give each other like money as presents. They'll like put money in an envelope, you know, <laughs> send it to their children and stuff. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, no, oh, no, charming and warms the heart. How do you get on in Poland? Do they speak? Do, do you um? Do they speak a lot of English there, or like, do you, are you fluent in Polish, or just like? I'm not fluent in Polish. I, I can get by a bit. I should be better than I am, but um, I just had to bear down and concentrate on other things um, because uh, there wasn't enough people. There wasn't anybody attending to some of the um, perspectives that needed attending to, and. Um, but uh, it, Polish people um, here, they started out gung ho for speaking English, and I'd say most of most of the younger people do speak some English. Some are fluent, but surprisingly, a surprising number of them don't really speak English. And I don't care. I don't want. I don't. I don't even want them to. But it's surprising. It is surprising to me. It's not as bad as France, where people, you know won't speak English but yeah yeah but it's um surprisingly a lot of people especially older but also also surprisingly some young people can't speak English either. a lot of the G Germans speak quite good English yeah the Swedish the Swedish are amazing oh, they, you would, oh yeah you would, you would think that they're American because they speak with an American accent from watching TV and, and uh they're amazing that way or for better or worse, but the, you know, it's probably bad. But they I, they could fool me as American. A lot of the Swedish people. 
Yeah, Russians don't speak much English. Um, I don't know about Italians. Mm, yeah, I think Italians maybe even less, probably even less than Polish. French, French, are, is, French, French are the worst, though. They, they, they really, they outright object to speaking English. I don't, I don't, but I mean the worst as in, you know. Actually, I, I, I'm, I'm glad for that. I want people to maintain their, their languages and their distinctions. I think the, one of the worst things that the English can do is, is get, get miffed with people who won't learn English because, you know, you, you don't want them to assimilate. You want them to, to be outsiders and, and uh, uh, to maintain their distinction. You know, the last thing you want to do is encourage integration with English. So, um, yeah, because I've been trying to find, um, I have a, um, well, you know that guy Mutiny, the, um, the Hitler supporter. He, he he did offer to translate my book into um, Farsi. He's in Iran, so I don't know if that will materialize, but that would be good. But it's hard finding people who would, because it would be a cost of a lot of money to pay someone to do it. But if there's people in our scene who would do it for um, either for free or for a discount, it would be, would be good. Yeah. Like Spanish would be good, because good, that's, that's quite similar to English. I don't know, do the Spanish speak much English? I think so. I think, yeah. I would, if I had to guess, they'd be a little bit, they'd be between um, the Germans and the Polish. Like, maybe not, or about as much as the Germans, probably. Yeah, I think yeah. they speak a lot. I think they speak English a lot. But I'm not sure. I don't really know. In in Spain. I don't, I don't think, I think in South America, they're probably pretty bad they probably only speak english uh it's gonna be only spanish yeah so when you like first moved to poland like from the usa i mean how did you was it like did you um become ingratiated like pretty smoothly or was it like was it a culture shock or, or what was it what was that process like the shock for me when I first came there was what was um, how beautiful the Polish women were where I came into a, the Gdansk area um, and yeah. how formidable the men were and how nice the cities were in comparison to the impression that we'd been given by American media that all these places behind the Iron Curtain were full of deformed, stupid, hunchbacked people. They were all gray and, and uh, depressing. And it was so unlike that, that it really, it was a shock that infuriated me, uh, that I'd been so misled to believe that these, pla these places and people were so uh, uh, bad and backwards. And, and it was really not like that at all. Yeah. Uh, so that 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 was the, that was the shock, and um, you know, I, I soon soon after the first time I came here, I I had thought that I wanted that I would wanted to live in Italy, but I I uh, I came to realize that I'd be that Poland would be a, a somewhat better choice. Yeah, yeah, I find Slavic women the most beautiful. Um... <laughs> Maybe percentage wise, I'm, you know, it's a matter you don't of percentage. See them a lot. You don't see well, them a lot. You, I mean, they're not all, in Hollywood or anything, but they, like, when you do see well, them. Well, they, like, they, they are in the, in the in models, yeah. Models, Czech and Polish women and, and Ukrainian yeah. women and Russian. Yeah. But, but um, it's a matter of percentages. I mean, every, every nation has a certain percentage of really beautiful women who can't be beat. And, you know, uh, yeah, that's true. Germans, English, they all do. But you know, maybe like you know, Russians and, and Ukrainians and and, uh, and Polish and Czechs have, you know, maybe six out of ten instead of five out of ten, something like that. Um, but nowadays, I'll tell you the truth is that you know, a lot of honestly, a lot of, a lot of the beauties have apparently got either gone west or just uh, started eating <laughs> too much because. It's it's not like it's not it's not like it was when I first came here. Not not even post on anywhere. Yeah, there's 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 pretty women, but it's not like uh, 
it's not like a you know the the uh the wonderland that I first came into in 1996 and you you, you didn't see I, I was amazed you didn't see fat women uh, there were so many women who were just like you know model level beauty I, my eyes I couldn't believe it when I was riding the train from Gdynia to uh but you know I, like I said with, with the European Union a lot of them I guess went to other places in Europe, to Germany, to England, and uh, and that's that. There's, a, you know, there's younger ones coming up through the ranks, but, uh, and yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's sort of like a beauty drain. Um, yeah. yeah. It's still, it still has the advantage, though, of not, of, of being, of being white, for, for the most part. You, you, you don't see that many. It's a trickle now, and it's bad, but it's not of. Uh, it's uh, it's tolerable even to even to someone like me who, who can't tolerate much at all. I mean, what what are the demographics of most of the immigrants? Are they like Arabs there, or Africans, or what sort of demographics do you get? I don't know. There's not much of anything. Um, yeah, there's been some, like a trickle of Middle Easterners. Person, I guess a lot of them. There's, there's, there's some Orientals, but I'm not sure if they're tourists or immigrants. There's some. Um, there's now been like a trickle of Africans, but not that many. Not not that I'm. Not that I welcome even that trickle, but there's but there's there's not much of anything yet. But that's not to say that the situation is is uh, is safe from it. I, the, the I don't think that it is, and I don't like um, the president's rhetoric, where he says that uh, his main objection is is the European Union implying uh, imposing quotas. He doesn't want to force people to live in Poland. If they want to come here, they're welcome. He says, that's, "Well, that's bad." Um, I guess a lot of the immigrants go to like the big areas like Warsaw. The cities. Well, yeah, there. I've been there too. It's, it's no, it's no. I mean, I've been to Warsaw not okay. that long ago, and it's, and it's there's surprisingly few there too. It's amazing. Uh, you wouldn't think so, but I think okay. it, it has to do with the, the, just the welfare system really doesn't pay that much here, and not only that, the wages are not that good here, um, and also medical insur insurance is is very very expensive, and you have to pay it. So there's a lot of reasons that people, just for social benefit reasons, are right. better off. Because yeah, in, in Germany, I think the system's more better. Oh, yeah. That. They're better off in Germany or Sweden or England, definitely, or, or uh, Holland. So that's that, I think that's a big reason. Also, Poland didn't sign, I think it's called the Lisbon Treaty, of, uh, of guaranteeing um, human rights which somehow uh, means that you can't discriminate against immigrants and therefore because they didn't sign on to it, they can. Something like this. I don't know why so far it's been good, but there are signs that it could turn on a dime for a disaster because there's all sorts of... Uh, right. There's all sorts of uh, housing projects and empty apartments all over the place and sooner or later these uh real estate developers will want to buy and sell these units and and uh, you know sharks that they are they won't care who they sell they sell them to and you know polish people are just the same as any other europeans in that they're not all that um ethnocentric they're you know vulgarly pragmatic and and only willing to uh, you know there, there's always so much resistance that they'll put up so um, it's, um, it's, it's, the, um, it's good for now but who knows is the Catholic stuff still quite like prominent in 2022 or is that kind of fading away uh, it's here but you know uh, it's it's uh, that's for the people that's pretty much 
a voluntary thing and part of their culture. And and um, right, most people, you know, are not that serious about it if they if they are religious at all. There's plenty of atheism here. Plenty of people don't believe it. It's not not a problem to be a non non believer. It's, you're not like uh, looked upon as a freak. Um, and the people who do go to church, you know, like my last girlfriend, she was like basically the whore of Babylon, you know, just like, you know, go and, <laughs> go and, confess, go and confess your, your sins and, uh, you know, everything's okay. Totally religious, totally religious or Babylon goes to church and, and, uh, and, and makes confession and everything's okay. Yeah. Huh? Only religious on Sundays. <laughs> Beauty drain this beauty move towards money. Well, of course. Pause on. Of course, that's nice. But right now, they're they're uh, they, they've been doing construction work on the uh, Central Market Square for a couple months. They're ripping up all the. They're they're, they're totally. So it's it's not that nice in the Central Market Square right now, but my street's still nice. So. Yeah, there's an image, Poznan sixteen seventeen. It's like a painting, and it's like a it's got there's like a river around the um yeah the, the water. Yeah, oh nice. It's very nice. Um, yeah, it's a, yeah, it looks like it's just so like um it's like historical, you know. It is. definitely is. It, it was medieval city has walled city um and it was the first capital of poland of the Poland actually it didn't it didn't last long as the capital it was soon it was pretty soon after moved to to uh Kinesno and then warsaw but it was it was the first capital of poland Looks nice, yeah. Definitely. The architecture. It really is. My my uh, building was built in the 1700s. The, the there's a building up the street that was built in the 1500s. The Ratish, the fancy building in the center of the uh, where it was built in the I think around just before 1500 by an Italian ar architect who modeled it after. The Venetian architecture and its interior is really exquisite. The, the church, Fara Church, is is uh, amazing. I I I do. I mean, I don't, I'm not Christian, but I go there just to to cool off, and it, it's like uh, I'm so lucky to be able to just go there into this amazing sculpture and artwork. It's really beautiful. These twisty columns going up, and, and um, the, yeah, they this, can't really do that anymore. I've, I've heard that no, they kind of lost the too, skills for that. Yeah, it'd be way too expensive to it, it would be prohibitive, but it's just, right. I mean, to be able to go there and, and uh, you know, just sit there amidst this, this uh, incredible expression of European artistry um and engineering um yeah i'm just ha happy to be able to do that uh, it's um and that's right here too well, that's, i maybe I, I shouldn't i shouldn't uh dredge up conflict but that was one of the things that it was um conflicting with with uh auto jonathan pole about was that uh you know this historian or supposed to be historian mocking me mocking along with along with ov fuck you he's, he's he was on a, a stream at eki Luxus, and he's mocking me he's asking me how i feel about being in poland a city that ethnically cleansed the germans i was like guy he, that's he, shitty yeah yeah and it, it is shitty and especially because um for a lot of reasons first of all um 
it's an ancient Polish city. It was only taken by Frederick the Great's son imperialistically, and and, and the, the Germans pushed out the Poles for 123 years and prohibited Polish speaking here. And it was only retaken by Pilsudski after World War I um, when you know, making good on the promise that the Germans had made to the Poles who fought on the German side in World War I, which was 8% of the, the German army, that they would that they would you know begin to allow Poland to Polish to live in Poland on again and um or <laughs> make some claims again <laughs> and then the Versailles Treaty went ahead and, and gave it back to Poland. Um and then after World War Two, after the you know after the Nazis had basically, you know, committed these atrocities and flattened Warsaw and, and killed killed many, many more people than were killed in Dresden, many more, many more civilians. Stalin shifted the borders and moved and the and the Germans were moved out of Poznan across the Oder River into Germany. And his Otto Pole, you know, complaining, oh and, and then he's on the um the stream with Apostolic Majesty, is it? The, the historian? I think that's his name. And uh, saying, oh, yeah, my, my family used to be, uh, was, my German family was living in, in uh, Poznan. And, and he said this, in this sort of convoluted Orwellian doublespeak, or not, not exactly Orwellian, but just said, never in the and never in the 19th century did the Germans living in Poznan think of it as anything but a German city. It's, it almost doesn't make sense. Never in the 19th century. Well, what about before the 19th century? You know, how about right. that? <laughs> you know, before, 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 Frederick, before Hitler's idol, Frederick the Great, uh, decided to, to imperialistically take it away from, steal it from the Poles. And so, and so the Versailles Treaty basically restored it, and then uh, Stalin put a coup de gras. You know whether the Poles liked it or not, because the Poles also were shifted westward across places that they lived in in Belarus and Ukraine. They were moved westward as well. And so here, here's Jonathan Pohl trying to make me feel guilty about this after, you know, after the Nazis had just killed millions of Polish people in in an effort to take their land and, and uh, as Lebensraum for themselves. So I'm, I'm supposed to feel sorry. I just can't. Yeah. I, I I mean, I understand how they could be a little bit bothered because they left a lot of great architecture here. I mean, when the Germans built something, it's going to be built. It's going to be built well. It'll last hundreds of years beyond what anybody else builds. They're just like, you know, they're really competent. And but uh, Gen general plan, uh, our general plan for the east, yeah. yeah. The thing is, like, um, you know, the, the notion that um, the Third Reich was um, supposed to defend white people, it's just totally incongruous with the actual um, policies regarding the east. I mean, it was, yeah, well, I'm, 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 I'm grateful that, that you have that, that you. Uh, are sensible enough to, or that you recognize that, and are sensible enough to recognize that. It's, it's matter of fact. Matter of fact, you, you know that it's, that's what I was saying early on in the show. Really, it's a, you, you know it's a choice. You're either going to defend Hitler or you're going to defend European people. They're not. They don't. It doesn't really go together. And, and, <laughs> yeah, and it's ironic. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of other it's European. Even, it's even in the interest of Germans, you're not doing it. There's plenty you're of other European Germans. groups and, and figures to, to look up to. You know, you're putting Some, Germans in a very. They're putting the Germans in a very awkward position when they when they advocate when they try to redeem Hitler. Um, yeah, I mean, I go a step further, um, but I don't. I mean, I think the whole Second World War was um, 
organized by the kosher folks top down. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't go that far, but I, I, I understand that you have that theory. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, Let, let's, let's not I think it's there. quite okay. Okay. But there is some quite reasonable evidence. I will say that. Okay. Um, so it's might not be as outlandish as it sounds prima facie. You can square it. Um, quite soundly with the the world dynamic at that time and the kosher hegemony well i say i say this um well, i don't subs i don't what, you, what you can do what you can what you can uh, what you can do on safer ground is say that um hitler was mirroring um <coughs> kosher supremacism you know doing a a, a jewish right. variety of it. well there was um, also the um the Ha'ava transfer agreement, yeah, 1933. I mean, I don't agree with that. I mean, well, you know, can... you don't agree with it for the sake of the, sake of the Palestinians, but you know, uh, what... part of that reason, I think, yeah, I don't think they have rights to that land um, in the Levant. Yeah, but the, well, I mean, really, in in the end, what 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 would happen is that the the richer and well, it was supposed to be this. So the richer, richer, more potent kinds were able to escape, while the, while the ones who were more right, more more harmless, were the ones who got who got killed. It was supposed to be an expedient way of expelling them or whatever, but it just, I mean, again, that's incongruous with the uh, notion that they were opposed to the um, the new world order or the Zio world order or whatever, because you're well, helping the Zionists achieve their aim, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, Hitler did say that these these uh, Zionists think that they're smart when, in fact, that they are creating a high, a high school there in, in Israel for uh, swindlers, for swindlers to ply their trade, and uh, that the, they will uh, and they will visit their their uh, nefarious the ways from there upon the uh, the whole world. Uh, so he wasn't. Yeah. He himself was completely naive. Let's 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 get away from that. I, I'm, I'm really, I I want to stay away from that third rail as much as I can. If there's um, if there's the stream. There's I noticed that there's a few more listeners. There's a there's a uh, stream link in case anybody wants to join Marshall and I. I'll, I'll, try, to keep, I'll try to keep this stream going up. A bit longer because I won't be able to stream again until the twenty second. I've used up all my streaming hard time. Yeah. So it's five days from now. That's all right. That's not so long. The, uh, what's the percentage of um, of Jewish people in New Zealand? Oh, it's like. National percentage? I have no idea. Um, is it like the US? I think, like that, the, I think that the Jewish population globally is considerably larger than what's nominally claimed. I think it's maybe 25% larger or something like that. The, wow. this, the data is quite weak for that, but, but furthermore, you know, a lot of... depends how people identify, you know. I mean, a lot of people... They might have, you know, a Jewish parent, but they won't tick Jewish on a census. Right. But but, that, but one good thing is that it does show in, in, in genetics. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's one of the uh, very big advantages of, of uh, going by the, um, the DNA nations. It's that Crypsis can't fool it too much. I mean, I'm sure that there'll be there'll be. It's not a thousand percent foolproof, but good enough to start. Of course, one of the things that we have to do is that, you know, once once we uh, organize our own people, then then we have to deal with our own crazy people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, this. People are just like completely proud of their lack of compassion, and uh, you know it's, it's awful. Um, yeah, I understand you don't you don't want uh, 
people are struggling to drag you down. I agree with that, but let's not get carried away. Um, you know, let, um, <clears throat> let nature weed out people where a modicum of help is not enough for them. And, um, and we can give a, a modicum of help for the people who are doing well to pair up with appropriate partners. We're not trying to, we're not trying to drag them down, but you don't, you don't have to get carried away with uh, quantifying certain genetic traits that's li liable to uh, have unforeseen consequences producing some kind of freak. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Although some, some, some would say that the Chinese are, are all to be concerned about in terms of genetic engineering. I don't know, maybe that's true. But if we don't do it, they'll do it. I don't know. Now look at Claire Kaw, she's genetically modified. <laughs> Oh, she's she goes, still around, is she? Yeah, though maybe maybe she's. Fuck, got she's absolutely of... indefatigable. <laughs> yeah. wow. I don't. Why doesn't Why doesn't she take secular cardism to the to the uh, the Uyghurs? And, and... But hasn't she got the message that like nobody cares about her like nonsense? <laughs> no, and that makes me that makes me suspicious that that. Um... It's a script. I mean, she's a she's a brick. It makes me suspicious she's that she's got really a, a brick wall. Right, yeah. right. And it's a script that she's been given to troll WN with because it, it doesn't make sense otherwise. You know, nobody wants it. And nobody well, it's wants a small it. scene, but it's a very important scene. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, and um, she tries to. She tries to make everything into to turn everything from a racial dynamic into a gender issue. And, and yeah, serves her interest better. So, yeah. Secular Quranism that's such an oxymoron. Yeah, it is. I it was, it was, um, I've been criticized for talking with her, but sometimes she'll come on with a different avatar and, and uh, I'll listen to her for a second and she's like, you know, she'll talk reasonably at first, but it always turns towards her, her agenda. But, you know, people think that, that uh, you know, I'm seriously in league with her. They're, they're not paying attention. <laughs> yeah. So is it is it is it winter in New Zealand now? Yeah, I think it's oh summer God. in Europe, that's isn't so it? Weird. It's summer in it's summer in Europe and summer in America. I, that's that's a I forget about that. That's that's hard to get used to. Yeah, the hemispheres are um, opposite climate, I think, like in terms of the seasons. Um, I, was, I have to be fascinated by New Zealand after seeing. Um, which Lord of the Rings was filmed there, right? And all those, yeah. those, those amazing shots. Well, that kind of proves that. I mean, that's a testament that you know you don't you don't need Hollywood to make a, an impressive movie. You know. Yeah. In fact, a lot of a lot of really good movies are um. There's a lot of good European movies. Um, you know that are subtitled. Um. I, yeah, I look forward to the death of um Hollywood. And all that garbage. <laughs> yeah. Because those, mo like, I mean, the Lord of the Rings movies, I mean, they'll hold up forever. I mean, they're not, I don't think they're polluted with any kosher. Um, Hollywood, mo Hollywood movies really, really piss me off. It's like, 
horror it's, movies. I, I, it's like my hands, you know, it's just wall to wall propaganda, anti white propaganda. My hands are tied behind my back. Horror but, movies to just. I know, I know they're going to be somewhere in there is going to, they're going to be promoting a white woman with a black guy. It just, it, I know that it's going to happen. They're going to do or they'll that. always kill the, the, the woman or whatever. Um, or, <laughs> the, yeah, um, but that John, I, I, mean, I want to strangle. I want to strangle. I did to strangle Quentin Tarantino. I hate that. Oh, he's such so a much. cunt too. You know, he lives in Israel with his like Jew. Oh, sorry, kosher wife. <laughs> don't you really? No kidding. I, I, I don't know if he lives there but actually, but I think he did at one point. Oh God! Does he? Yeah. Oh, he's he's a he's a real like prick. Like, he is. He is a he is the most obnoxious. I don't like his face. I don't like anything about him. I don't like any. I don't. I don't like anybody who likes his movies. So I hear somebody say that they like like uh, Pulp Fiction. I don't. That, that's like I don't. I don't like this person anymore. As of twenty twenty, they were splitting their time between Tel Aviv and Los Angeles. No kidding. He is, and their, he is, their son he is, was born he is in Israel. His son was oh born my! In Israel. It, it, it's it, yeah. it's a, it's just weird. But that he genre is, is was disgusting. It, to, I remember the, that genre. I mean, like um, oh yeah, he did the the, the uh, Inglorious Bastards. I didn't see that. And also, and also the. the uh, Dingo, Durango, or something. Django, Unchained. Django, yeah, 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 that that. Um, and it, yeah. I didn't see. I wasn't gonna watch that either. But I was asked. I tell this story. I was asked if I wanted to go see Pulp Fiction when it came out by a friend, and I said, not because of Clinton Tarantino, but because of um, I just know where Hollywood movies are coming from. I said no because I know right. it's gonna be. I know it's going to be about making excuses for white women to go with blacks, and the, and my my friend looked at me, puzzled. He's like, hey, "So you no. were cognizant of this said, back in the nineties, in the eighties, starting eighties, was it? Yeah. So it, so he said, he looked at me, he couldn't believe. it. He said, "How did you know that that uh, in the end there was going to be, you know, Lawrence Fishburne with uh, Uma Thurman? You know, you couldn't. You know, it's like I don't. I, you know, you don't have to be." You don't have to be a, a psychic to know where this propaganda is going. It's it's just it's about destroying yeah, yeah. it's about destroying the minds of white men. But some horror movies are just just plain like sick. Like I mean, some of the like oh, yeah. um like like Hostel and Saw like movies like that. Like the thing is like the I, I, I never I never I never I don't I never enjoyed violence in, in movies. Like yeah, because the thing is those movies is like they're not, not scary. Sophisticated. They're not scary. They're just like very good and they kind of use let's, the gore let's see what this is they it's use the gore as, yeah they like use the gore as a crutch to sell the movie well I, i'm not in the gore away and it's I'm, like, I'm, yeah. I'm not sadistic i don't like saying that even if it's even if it's against people that i don't like it honestly um it's probably gonna be a troll but let's see hello <laughs> That's probably um, Domingo, if I had to guess. <laughs> a pro, a, a guy who's pro. So, are they being like, are they like, are they a friend or a foe? They're just trolling me, um, thinking that I'll be, it will bother me that they uh, are doing something Russian. If I, it doesn't i'm not i'm not anti-russian i'm not i'm not anti-russian i'm not anti-ukrainian anti um i don't i i'm totally against putin putin's war well, they're quite similar people aren't they i mean they're not i know but they're not so they're not similar as as similar as uh putin wants to make it out to be so that they, they could just you know wipe out the, the national distinction but they're, yeah i mean they're, they're genetically related right. Yeah, but I, I yeah, it's um, just singling out one over the other doesn't really make sense because they kind of similar is my point. But that also, um, yeah, if they're similar, then logically, why, why, what's all the fighting about? But I mean, you look at those administrations, and again, the kosher fingerprints all over them. Well, yes, on one side, but on the but uh, on the other side, 
it's more indirect. You, kosher fingerprints are on Putin, but Putin is also unhinged. You know, it, it's a lot of it is his fault. Uh, he really, he really doesn't have a, a, an excuse for what he's doing. I mean, just the other day, he murdered twenty-three, like very normal Ukrainian people. Could be looking like you and me, um, in in the center of Ukraine, no, not even like in the east, uh, further west than than Odessa and the Black Sea, even. Um, you know, I could. He has some argument. To defend these eastern regions, in as much as they was, they were being attacked by by uh, Operation Clean Break, Azov, and NATO forces, I could see him going in there and occupying these places. Even I don't think that they are historically rightfully Russian. I can understand that, but that doesn't excuse him to go and attack. Uh, the rest of Ukraine, as if there was a clear and imminent danger, there wasn't. I can't relate to Thomas Seven Seven or um, uh, Mark Collette when they try to say that you know there was this threat, like a the Cuban Missile Crisis that that uh, that that uh, Putin was up against. It's, that's bullshit. Just, yeah, it, that is false just, equivalence. I don't like Mark Collette. You know he gets he, he gets some things right and he gets and, and and there's some things that he's just dead wrong about. It's a shame. It's a shame that it's that it's, that it's mixed up. It's a shame there's no meritocracy. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. I mean, a lot of these commentators are shit. A lot of the best commentators are you know un, underground. Hopefully that changes. I guess it will. To some extent, but we're gonna, we're taking heavy casualties in the meantime. It's really horrible. These and these right wingers like Mark Clint, they don't help. No. In in as much as the right wingers, I mean. So anyway, and whatever. Yeah. Um. Did you hear that Emery Waters folded her her uh, her party? She gave up. I don't even know about that. But she was doing, um, I think they're called For Britain. And, uh, and she's an Irish lady. Uh, never mind. Yeah. I haven't heard of her, so just as well. So my, I, I, sympathetic well, I know lady. there was the, B, the BNP. I, didn't I think do, were... she, didn't do, she didn't do the JQ. She was like Tommy Robinson. Yeah, really. Sure. You don't saw, you don't opinion, though, that you don't saw the problems that way. I, I mean, I would contend that the JQ is indispensable, though, that it just, even so though it's a... Right. It is, it is indispensable. But then just, the, at some point, you're going to have to bite the bullet and just discuss it. Yeah, but, the, you know, the problem is that people like Mark Collette and David Duke, they go to another extreme and they make it like um, they go to the, uh, the pro-Hitler side to where, you know, so that's yeah. that, that's not handling it right either, so... Yeah, there has, to, there, has to, there has to be a platform like this one, ultimately. Yeah, and not take and not. Uh, the thing is, it's not. I mean, the. I think the kosher folks, the head of the snake, so to speak. But, I mean, they need collaborators. Uh, uh, you know, they need collaborators. They, they always have. They've always relied on perfidious well, people to small, help them. You know, small, small minority. So but it's a collaborative like, thing. Let, let, yeah, let's let's. Uh, Speak gingerly, head of the snake is not, it's not that cool. But it's, you know, I, I, I'm. A bit, it's not your fault, but I, I have to be careful here. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have to. Uh, <laughs> Snakes aren't necessarily <laughs> evil animals. Though. Snakes are good. Yeah, I, I'll be right back <laughs> in thirty seconds. Don't fed post. I'll be right back.
the link is there if anybody would care to join Marshall and I. I guess it's really late for Nor for Norman. Yes. Yeah. Would well, no, actually it's early. It's early. <laughs> it's early in the morning for him. In California. Yeah. Um, oh no no, yeah. It's like uh, six, five, it's like four four in the morning or something like that. I, I wish uh, Tiffany would come back, this nice lady from California. She was cool. So how's your website doing? Well, I'm not keeping track of traffic. I don't really care. I've I never took on comments except for I've opened comments to this this one, the latest post because it is about you know the Euro DNA agent sign up. So if people want to use it for that. Uh, I've let that one. So uh, it's good as far as I'm concerned because it keeps a steady rotation of articles that I'm convinced are, are uh, relevant to our concerns. Um, it's not, it's not popular, but um, it solidifies uh, necessary positions and is in position to, to be more popular um, one day. But I've, I've never, I've never uh, been concerned with popularity at this this point, I'm more concerned with uh, uh, sound premises uh, and advocacy, and that uh, the important bases are covered. And so, I think it does that. Yeah, and I'm satisfied. I mean, it doesn't, and it doesn't, it doesn't repeat some old mistakes. So, doesn't doesn't it's not it's not. Uh, saddled with some of the the, the baggage is the baggage of uh wn 1.0 so oh yeah what a travesty <laughs> yeah so you got spy versus spy there i remember that from mad magazine that was that was a kosher magazine <laughs> really really kosher uh you know the spies. You know, you're on Madison Avenue, and uh, the spies yeah. remind me of Orthodox kosher people. <laughs> yeah, they, I didn't say they, they do look like a, that. But the reason why it's my avatar is I see it as an allegory of the political system. Um, one spy <laughs> is white, one spy is black, and it's akin to the left and right paradigm, where they're both the same, really. You know. Because that's kind of the joke of a lot of the um, skits is it's just the same spy. Well, here we have a, a huge difference because um, I I see. Um, well, I'm talking about is the um, the uh, controlled opposition, if you like, of politics in the in the West. Like, well, the control, the control here. Here's the control. That, my point is like the Republicans and the Democrats or whatever. Or, Labour and Conservatives in the UK, or whatever it is, yeah, but they're not the solutions. They're both kosher. No, the, the, yeah, but this is not the same as the left-right paradigm because the left-right paradigm is important in that. Um, let me let me say this. Don't interrupt for a second. <clears throat> the right, the the, the right, uh, the depth grammar underlying. Uh, the right is uh, objectivism seeking pure and narrow warrants beyond the social correctivity of praxis or with beyond nature or within nature in natural fallacy below correct correct the correctivity of praxis um, the left the death grammar of the left is unionization, 
coalition building, social advocacy, and um, social organization. And this is what they don't want you to, uh, they don't want European peoples to do. So they've marshaled them into a situation where us, or our people who identify as white into a situation where of they've marketed a characterology of our enemy as the left and the left is this beast that doesn't deal with nature doesn't deal with reality in this characterology doesn't deal with truth doesn't deal with fact doesn't deal with moral principles like that <clears throat> and and is and, and is all about equality and quote social justice and we know that social justice is a terrible thing because if we had social justice then we would start paying attention to the kosher folks and we don't we don't want who are on top and being socially right. unjust and we don't want that so anyway so let me finish <clears throat> so this characterology where the this the quote left is bad because this is a red cape of uh of proper social organization and unionization as plato would say um the way to counter despotism and the tyranny including the kosher folks would be to unionize and organize um you know your broad group because then that would that's the way that would um be a power to counter uh might makes right the might makes right of uh not only the kosher folks but the right wing folks because there are the right wingers who are uh taking the payoff and, and glad to sell our people out um under the pseudo warrant of their objective pseudo of their supposedly objective superiority say for iq or in the case of liberals take the license and liberal licentiousness also on the basis of their objective superiority say they're they're a beautiful woman so they, they're, they're not they're, they're just gifted they're not accountable to our people again it's a narrow warrant and but in this characterology of the left it started circa 2008 with the with the um financial bailout of and 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 thorough hegemony of kosher power and interest they didn't want there was this intersectionality of that came together against kosher power and interest of people becoming aware of the austrian school boom bus cycle in in that subprime like the, um, occupy movement no wait wait a second of of the frankfurt school coming to these these leftist co leftist unions also taking note of the kosher folks being on top and finally um we're talking 2008 here not not 2011 of of um austrian of, of the um excuse me the uh the neocons people becoming aware that you know paul wolfowitz and and, and pearl and fife you know responsible for these these wars and this false opposition so uh that they, they had to they became concerned that if people began if whites in particular began to connect with this depth grammar of the left and and the idea of unionizing our people that they would see, that they would then not only be organized and, and empowered but they would turn their attention to who to hold to account those who are on top and it's not just the kosher folks but they're they're the complicitness of right wingers and liberals including white, white right wingers and liberals um who don't see themselves as accountable and don't want to see themselves accountable with richard spencer's of the world and like that so uh <clears throat> they um so they have they came up with this madison avenue characterology first first brought to attention as something to be called for by paul godfrey and then richard spencer of the left as something that doesn't that's completely unhinged whereas our left properly speaking our unionization would 
not would not be it would see objective truth it would deal with objective truth facts harmonizing with nature um uh, deal with deal with reality but it would but this would be a matter of feedback to be gauged against uh, the relative interests of our group union and coalitions we don't go normal people don't go around objective and just like p pursuing p uh, pure truth for the sake of pure truth we are concerned with our subjective and relative interests of course but this is the position that we've been that we've been steered into that our advocates have been steered into time and again we identify as right dissident right either right nor left phony left right paradigm and the left is the pro is the problem because it's a red caping and a misdirection to get us to chase against that that the these these distortions and misrepresentations of left and not connect with the depth grammar which is our social advocacy our social unionization our social justice if you will our, our um organization so this is why this is why they're doing that and this is why i'm very very um, i'm touchy about that when people say you know the, the phony left right paradigm because that is to play directly into their their red caping trick um you, you, well, you mentioned one more thing you, you mentioned uh, occupy uh, hold on you mentioned occupy wall street in, in 2011. this was um yeah well they're trying to get ahead of all opposition that was like you know largely soros sponsored and you know they, they take all good ideas all good social advocacy ideas and then they distort them and misrepresent them and weaponize them against whites every time so just because an idea is on the left doesn't mean that in its its fundamental uh, outlook it's entirely wrong or or wrong at all it just it, the problem is is that they take all good social organizing ideas and they misrepresent them and weaponize them against us like like for example marxism uh is taking the idea of unionization and and making that instead of a national unionization making that an anti internationalist unionization the idw um uh, to overthrow for example european nations or cultural marxism which was a different uh, later permutation which was to take to form quasi unionizations of non-whites and anti-whites to throw against against whites um, in coalition but um, this is not the left it's our left it's a cultural marxist left it's or it's a regular marxist left it's not uh, it's not our left which yeah is the, i agree which would be a unionization of our people and it's important to maintain this left ethno nationalism as i see it because uh right-wing identity is not only inherently unstable for its lack of correctivity um uh, in, in, in its in, in its seek in its seeking the pure warrants above or, or below praxis but it is um it it uh it um it all it, it also provides you know ways for where it goes into like the third positionism it provides infiltration of uh, the kosherism of christianity or the um the divide and conquer and misdirection of of nazism and hitler's natural fallacy patrick is I, here. I don't know how much credence you give to the the um uh political compass but i think that that provides a much more lucid explanation of uh political positions I don't think two, there's two there's mm -hmm. two axes yeah, I, I, don't, so, I, I, think, I, I think that I've got it right, I, 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 but I don't want to. I don't want to argue about it right now. Maybe later. Patrick is here. Let's say hi to Patrick. Patrick, hi. Hey, how you doing, Daniel? What's going on? I'm good. I'm good. I couldn't join you earlier because I had some. I had some things I had to do. All right. I thought Norvin was going to join you. He said he, he said he would. I guess I guess he uh, went to. I don't know. I guess not. So, how are you today? Are you discussing your uh, theory today? Discussing the theories, and I've been at this for four hours and twenty-seven minutes. I'm happy with it. Um, 
I've, I've early on was reflecting on some things that we were discussing. Um, some of some of it might might be um, uh, tough to chew for you a bit for a while, but I think I think it should be okay. And, uh, what do you mean by tough to chew? Just just summarize if you could. Oh, it's hard to summarize. I, I can't. I'm exhausted. Okay. We can talk. We can talk about it next time. I'll, I'll be able to All stream right. start a new stream on the after the 22nd. My stream yard the news. Um. So what were you doing? Farm work. Uh no, I was just uh I was just talking in some other chats that I had going. Well, that's all right. But yeah, I I'm gonna do probably do some of that today. Sounds. Do you grow do you grow your own like vegetables or, or whatever? So what? Do you like you have your own, own vegetables? Well, I grow I grow some uh, some I have a garden and I have like some some uh, animals that I take care of that provide oh, nice. me with like eggs. What besides chicken animals do you have? I don't know, I just have chickens for now. But I do plan on uh, maybe getting some goats and some uh, some other types of animals. Goats are neat. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you have uh, psilocybin mushrooms on your farm? Yeah. They grow wow. wild everywhere. That's great. Yeah. That's a good experience. Really? You've had that experience? <laughs> yes, I've had uh, I've experienced. Well, I'll expound upon it. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm I've had either. experience with uh, ayahuasca. What's that? Is that a kind it's, of mushroom? Uh, no, it's not a mushroom. It's a hallucinogen, uh, a thenogen that where you you know you you make the, it's it comes from the Amazonian uh, rainforest uh, Indians. They use it for shamanic. Uh, initiation. Is it a flower? Where, where does this come from? I think it's a type of root, if I'm not mistaken. Huh. Well, they do a lot of things. They'll, they'll look at the backs of toads and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I know ayahuasca is uh, one of the main isolated things that get isolated from ayahuasca is DMT. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. So it was a good experience. <laughs> Is DMT? That's in its more organic, no, in more synthetic form. DMT comes from ayahuasca. Is, is that the, is that what they make? Is that the uh, same as ecstasy? Not the same. No. No, ecstasy is actually um. Ecstasy is not a hallucinogen. Designed by the kosher folks, it's synthetic. It's not a. It's also not a hallucinogen. It was actually um partly designed to replace the LSD market. I don't want I've to never, get, I've never I done it. But they, they say that it makes you touchy feely. It makes well, it makes like, it can also damage. Um, I think your nerve centers. Uh, it's oh, not yeah. good. Ecstasy is oh, not that's good. Nice. Yeah. I like mushrooms. I'll, I'll stick with them. Yeah, you should stick with those. Stick with weed and mushrooms if you do them. If, Have if you, you tried uh, LSD? Because it's also derived from fungus. Yeah, ergot. Yeah, I've, I've, I don't I've, recommend I've, LSD. I've had, I've, had, I've had really, really good trips, and I've had really, really bad trips. It's, mushrooms it's are better. Philocybins are better. I mushrooms are better, but mushrooms are better. But LSD is really, really intense and interesting if you have if you have a good uh, trip. Yeah, I'm not. I'm it's not a, it's like that. it's way beyond uh, mushrooms. Mushrooms, though, are wow, but they're great. I think that's all I'm going to stick to is probably micro dosing of uh, mushrooms. I've never had a bad experience with mushrooms, though. I know that. I know How many times have you taken them? Oh, not that many. Maybe 15 times, 10, 15. Not that many. Could you. Um, I mean, the most intense thing I've ever had is um, uh, uh, brown, uh, marijuana brownies. Edibles. Well, well, I'll say this: I, I, it's... mushrooms are easier to deal with than, than marijuana, in my experience, because marijuana is more is, can be very psychological, whereas mushrooms don't fuck with they don't they don't fuck with your head. Okay. Have you taken um like edibles, like brownies or gummies or anything like that? Yeah, I never had any success 
that way. I've only got a stomach ache uh, when it has okay. um smoked enough of it in my time. So it's a different beast to I'm um, smoking it. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Well, let me ask I you a question. Not, not but if you're not saying that the psilocybin's it. even like it's um tamer than even smoking it for you personally, that's like quite a, psychologically it's, you hallucinate though. I mean I'm I'm not saying it's not like a, a, a trip. It is. Not not to change the subject. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Daniel right, what, go ahead, Pat. I got a question for you. How controlled do you think the dissonant right or what what's now called the DR um which was called the alt right previously, how controlled do you think it was initially when it was sort of um started back in uh I guess two thousand thirteen, I guess it started to grow on the internet and then eventually it got to 2016 and got a little boost from the whole Trump, you know, the tr Trump candidate candidacy. Well, I think that, um, it, 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 especially, how, how especially in that aspect, that, or, especially in that aspect, quite a bit. okay, go ahead. Well, let me finish. Uh, how can, how controlled do you think it was? And do you think potentially that, uh, there was some interference from government, um, intelligence agencies, maybe not even like governmental ones, but maybe privately funded ones. Um, I don't, I know that's probably out of your wheelhouse, but I'm, no, no, it's, 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 it's in my wheelhouse enough. I've thought about it enough. The, the government agencies, a, a little bit out of my, not, wheelhouse not just before. government agencies, well, let me answer the question, but like intelligence, but, but let me just put the caveat, uh, not just the government agencies, but also, uh, you know, any ancillary sort of intelligence agencies. Well, that, that's, that's where I go. Okay. It's like. I don't, I don't know. Um, I would suspect that government agencies would be, up, you know, apprised and maybe encouraging some prospectus a little bit. First of all, you have to go. You have to go. You have to look at the concept. Sorry, of control. You have to look at the concept of control and what that means and how it's done and what what do you mean by control and and. A lot of well, it I'm is. Talking about primarily right, well, come on, let me finish, Patrick. Right, this right, is a right, problem. Right, right. Well, I mean, all right, let me let me finish. <laughs> you asked me Go a ahead. question. All right. But the what what the, is meant by control is is like um, not always not always um, that a person is enacting a script, but they're controlled in the in terms of the of, in the sense that they're limited. They're controlled in, in what they can do, you know, and in, in various ways. Uh, they're constrained and they're steered into a particular perspective. As I've, as I've been saying that, you know, to take this alternative right position in opposition to the quote characterology of the left, not, not quote quote, into a characterology of the left. And okay, so that was controlled. Um, and I believe it has the hallmarks of a marketing program coming out of Madison Avenue, you know, okay. that, that, that is flushing out the David Horowitz, Paul Gottfried perspective. They're, they're concerned to do damage control um, and, re re, you know, to create the paleoconservative 2.0 in the form of the um, alternative right and a dissident right, um, which is a mixture of Christ Judeo Christianity and, and Enlightenment values. Um, so there, it has the whole, and, and that it would be marketed through someone like Mike e Enoch, uh, I would suspect, and that um, there would be. Are obviously Jewish intelligence involved. Um, yeah, but uh, that most of these, most of these people were were just sort of um, useful idiots, like you know, millennial woes or or, um, or Richard Spencer, uh, who were looking for a, a means to uh, to voice and didn't want to. Uh, uh, Run too. I don't know. Didn't want to run too afoul of, of the of standard narratives. Yeah. Um, so that's 
so the the answer is that I think that it was um, there was a, a kind of a, a soft control, but a nudging going on, um, and it's still going on. It's still it's still. Well, very much a, a, all right, let me know when you're finished. I just want to interject this. All right, there was I I think that there was something else that I wanted to add, okay. but th that's that's the gist of it. I I think that the important point is what is meant by control and it's not so much the stereotype but more of a like um a nudging and a coddling uh of uh of of language games uh, so that's it that that, that okay. they want that t because they were concerned that white people not have a proper understanding of postmodernity, that they not have a proper understanding of the depth grammar of the left and how that that would serve them to organize, to unionize, to build coalitions and uh, social advocacy and, and, uh, and organization. So uh, they, they came up with this characterology that they're having people like Rams Paul and others uh, call attention to how, okay. oh, the left, the left doesn't deal with reality. The left is all about narrative. The left doesn't care about truth. The left doesn't care about nature. The left doesn't, you know, like that. Um, and they're what they're doing is they're calling attention to the red capes that they themselves have uh, that, that they have fluffed up in their uh, in their in their advocacy their anti white advocacies with the cultural Marxism or regular Marxism and um, not allowing for a left as white ethno-nationalists would organize it in our interests, which would, in fact, incorporate objective truth inquiries, but as a subservient feedback to the calibration of our unionization of our, of our group, of our praxis, of our worldview. Like that. Well, recently, the reason why I say this, Daniel, is because recently I stumbled upon um, this book, which is about Steve Bannon. And within this book, written by Benjamin uh, Tietelbaum, who I think might be a Jew, but yeah, I it think is. he might be a Jew. Uh, but nevertheless, he um, he did have some good insight into what was the... It was mainly about traditionalism and René Guignol and Evola and Steve Bannon and sort of his embrace of these kind of ideologies and how they diffused into the alt-right. But what's interesting there, and there was a story about how both Giorgiani, uh, Jason Reza Giorgiani, and Richard Spencer, yeah. through Arctoast, attempted to establish a company with the backing of, uh, of you know, Steve Bannon. And I'm not sure if they were able to broker that deal, uh, but it does appear there might be a, a bit of a connection there. In addition to that, it also appears there, there, might, there might be a connection between Giorgiani and Richard Spencer through a guy named Michael Bagley, who was connected to Jellyfish uh, Intelligence LLC, which he recently went to jail or prison, I should say. He's out now. Back in 2019, for laundering money from for the Mexican cartel, they were linked to Giorgiani and also to Richard Spencer. And this is mentioned by uh, Tietelbaum and having a potential connection to both um, Giorgiani and Richard Spencer. Yeah, the, the, I, there's um, a long uh, article that I posted in Majority Rights um, back in in those days of the alt-right and um and with um with uh breitbart and um, steve bannon and uh mencius moldbug and uh milo yiannopoulos and um who else was complicit in there there was also uh um What's his name? The partial Indian guy. Uh, he was always bragging about his IQ. He's really obnoxious. Uh, uh, who? 
Not D'Souza, right? No. Well, maybe he might have been. No, 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 no. no. And um, oh, what was his name? I forget. But um, he he was you know. Richard Spencer thought that he was really cool for a while, and um, but I know it was Georgiani, like, Georgiani, right? There was those. He was Iranian. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, he wasn't mentioned in this particular article, but it, it, it makes, I know that he was part of an effort. He was instrumental. He was instrumental in getting alt dot com off the. Um, you know, he was one of the initial founders. Yeah, I mean, there there was that, and then he was he was definitely part of some uh, <laughs> some stuff. Yeah, and he was he was trying to he was trying to work with. I know there was this kind of failed effort between him, I think, Richard Spencer and others, yeah. and um, and um, Regnery, I think, to to do something. Yeah, Regnery. Um, <laughs> this is the right wing, and um, you know, That's it, why it's, it's, the, it's Steve, Steve Bannon. Him. Steve Bannon was like kind of like, uh, you know, this is he's of the uh, kind of of the paleocon school, you know, with being a Catholic and and uh, trying to merge Judeo Christianity and uh, and Enlightenment values, which is you know, in sync with America at its worst. So, well, he and, seems to think that it's compatible with traditionalism of uh, René Gagnon and it might be, and, you know, and, you know, and also oh. Julius Savola. Um, I don't know if it got compatible with Julius Savola. I don't know. I don't know that much. I don't think was Julius Savola uh, compatible with Christianity. I don't, I don't know. He saw some redeeming traits in Catholicism, but for the most part, he was not into Christianity. Well, you know, and Manchus Molberg tries to uh, see uh, a minor um, player, in my opinion. NRX is well, very minor. He's a minor player, but it, but uh, you know, it, it, this was an effort. This was a big effort on the part of the false opposition, the, the dark enlightenment, and the neo reactionary. So, some so, some people still like, look to that as you know. Um, you know, something that is <clears throat> helpful to our in, for our concerns. You know, which is complete, you know, bullshit. Um, but yeah, that's certainly you, know, you couldn't have a more clear example of controlled opposition than mentioned in my book. Unfortunately, white nationalism or whatever white identitarianism, all these other things have become vehicles. I think for. Um, everybody from independent interest, you know, sort of uh, armchair philosophers, scholars, uh, you name it, to, I think, governments, foreign governments, to use as a type of Trojan horse. Well, I think it's unfair. I think it's unfair to, to give them to say white nationalism, because white nationalism is, to me, always a term of just white people defending yeah yeah i understand people. that but i'm i'm just saying so I, I wouldn't i wouldn't give them that broad, you know, it's a, no 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 but uh, let me just what i'm, I'm white, not trying white identity broad, yeah. I mean, if you want to create if you want to say that they latch on to white identity yeah okay i'll, I'll go oh, hold, hold on a minute i'm just trying oh, to i just want to defend the term white nationalism that's all okay all right. all right i was speaking as a broad a broad stroke and a broad spectrum you know not really so I was saying that they use it as a sort of a cloak and dagger sort of uh, way to both conceal their intentions and also infiltrate a community that they, they think will give them access to uh, many unwitting dupes that they will manipulate. That's well, in, 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 as, in as much as in, in as much as they at the and in their desperation the, they will in as much as they move videos. through. Yeah, but it. it, it in as much as they move through the right wing identity, that's what that's why this um, left at the national platform is so important because it automatically excludes that kind of infiltration and, sub and subversion. Mm -hmm. um, whereas a right wing identity is largely 
uh, an objectivist quest for pure warrants either beyond nature or within nature which are not subject which are in the first place not subject to correctivity and therefore the corrective therefore inherently unstable not, not conducive to homeostasis to, to self-corrective system which would be uh bounded and protected by the concept of unionization which contrary to the red cape is not is not the left is not liberal the left left is the opposite of liberal because with a union you're conserving what's within and excluding uh anybody who would try to rupture your your boundaries so it's the opposite of liberalism and um so and uh, and um a right right wing identity or third positionist identity would try to introduce right-wing elements even though they say the third position like christianity which would say that what you do is convert to christianity and you're one of us or uh you know national quote national socialism which would say you know uh you know, that it's you know just nature uh, and uh therefore uh you know let, let the chips fall where they may um uh, that or that um uh, uh or scientism in the sense that um, seeking uh, pure scientific warrant, uh, you know, it's all about IQ. So, uh, you know, we, we um, that's why we're so right. And, and these, these Marxists who want to talk about uh, uh, power differences are, are wrong when it's really not highly relevant because if, um, because all IQ arguments can do is turn away stupid Marxist arguments. They don't, um, they don't, uh, they, but they suggest, they suggest that, that um, if someone else, an Ashkenazi or someone else has a high IQ, that they, that they're, they should be welcome to contribute to our group or, or that if someone, or if, if your son or daughter, has an IQ below 100 that they sh that they you should welcome their replacement. <laughs> I mean yeah. that's how ridic that's how ridiculous the objectivist argument is. You know I I I'm not saying that IQ stuff isn't true, but it's not. This is we are not defending IQ. We're defending our people. And, and IQ all IQ arguments to do at their best is defend against stupid Marxist arguments, which of course the Ashkenazi want to do. That's why they have you have Steve Saylor um, putting up the stupid red cape of of um, human biodiversity as a matter of vertical IQ when it should be a when it's obviously it should be a matter of horizontal niche differences and discrimination according to our uh, genetic kinds for their uh, niche adaptations, not not a matter of. Uh, IQ and which serves, of course, Ashkenazi interest to, to emphasize. That's why you hear you'll hear Luke Ford talking about that stuff all the time. That's a good point. I'm also curious. Um, you know, you mentioned Paul Gottfried. You know, previously, not to make this about you know Paul Gottfried, but it seems like a lot of no, he's people, relevant. People in the dissident right, they only insofar entertain his ideas to the extent I think they want his uh, money. They want his money so they might, you know, branch well, out. God, well, Godfrey has money? I think people probably potentially think he does. Does he not? I don't think so. No, I it, don't think he's rich. I, mean, I don't think it is. I don't think he has particular connections either. But but uh, I know that Joel Davis at one time made an overture that, that appealed to Paul Godfrey because he was looking to connect it to to money, which I I didn't I didn't like. That went along with some other things about Joe Joel Davis that I didn't approve of, saying that Israel was our friend, saying you know, um, uh, and apparently going along quite a bit with his professor Katz, and uh, the the usual alter cast uh, as right wing and, and you know his being a Catholic and, and all the the Abrahamic yoke that that entails. So I, I do have 
uh, problems with with uh, Joel Davis, though maybe he's not incorrigible. Maybe he can come around. Okay. Well, whomever Paul Gottfried is, I don't think it's just his intellectual ideas that carries him and gets him uh, this wide influence in. No, I agree. That's that's, that's well said. Uh, the spark of Patrick's intelligence burst there for a second into truth. So it's, it is, <laughs> wow! Was, uh, was, uh, you know his his Jewishness. You know, he was, was the he, he was his 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 graduate school advisor was Herbert Marcuse, which was you know okay, which is one of the central figures of the Frankfurt School, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that. Paul Gottfried got the heebie-jeebies <laughs> when he saw how screwed up what the Marx, the cultural Marxists were doing, and is, is basically instinctively on an intuitive level trying to do damage control, and doing it apparently well enough to fool a lot of people into thinking, you know, hey, he's he's our guy, he's on our side, and he's not. He is a paleocon. He coined the term paleocon, it's a paleoconservative, which it, which is derived from Did he? from Frank Meyer, who was a Jewish uh, Marxist originally, then converted to, then devised this concept of fusionism, fusing Judeo-Christianity and, enlight and enlightenment values, which again, it blends seamlessly with with um apparently with american values he was a mentor to ronald reagan and then there from there other other paleocons uh came up uh, pat buchanan joe Sobran, sam francis uh paul cod paul godfried uh and then um they formed the national policy institute and then Sam Francis died, and, and Richard Spencer took over. Paul Gottfried, seeing these, the way there was an intersecting, coming back to haunt Jewish power interests, which came to greater hegemony than ever in 2008, um, saw, saw fit to reinvigorate paleoconservatism after it had been buried by the neocons people were going to begin to notice that the neocons were quite kosher with uh, Paul Wolfowitz, uh, uh, Pearl and, and uh, Fife and um, Kagan. And so they had to do something to get the other false opposition, which the paleocons back, back in order and, and revamp it and make it young with the alternative right. Also, they had to do damage control for the I think culture. They failed. Well, they're, 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 they also had to, had to do damage control against the cultural Marxists uh, by, you know, calling that the left, and uh, th those were anti-white unions, the, the, the politically correct unions, the blacks, women, gays, anti-whites, in coalition and weaponized against whites, and then, and also, stop yawning, they also had uh <laughs> well because it's not boring but they, they also had um yeah, i'm not yawning because it's boring dude yawning okay you, you, need, you need oxygen and and also uh a third element there the uh austrian school economics which is also quite kosher and their boom bust cycle which culminated in the 2008 financial crisis and bailout which you know <laughs> the coach folks got away scot-free so uh you know, Paul Gottfried and David Horowitz too, not just Paul Gottfried, but these these guys would be uh, getting the heebie-jeebies. And as you uh, as you kind of as you felt and observed, there'd be something more to them than just Paul Gottfried. Um, and I, th I think that it would be there was a uh, it has all the hallmarks of a marketing campaign. The, the coming out of Madison. Right. Madison. The yeah, they're all trying to do all right now. The dissident right. It's the, a it's a marketing, it's a marketing campaign against the uh, characterology of 
of the left as the enemy because they want that to be the enemy because they don't because it's also the enemy of the jews at this point yeah. the left is because they're on top you know what what are left what is what are left there they're, they're unions of the underdogs and coalitions yeah. of the underdogs and the jews are on top so they don't want they want the left to be the enemy and they want to enlist right-wing reactionaries like you know richard spencer or whomever and and also continue to pen to the they pointed to them, telling them how objectively superior they are, and and, uh, and here's here's you know hand here's the the magic hand giving you uh, greasing your palm in turn, and there's the um, the liberals who also think that they're on the basis of objective grounds think that they're superior in their license and licentiousness, and they want to, they want so they want to continue to encourage them, uh, and this this is these are the um the stable enemies that we have that we're up against and orville i don't know if you know who he is just did a a, a podcast in which he could you say that name again orville a-a-r-v-o-l-l -L. yes i know who he is anyway he did a he i have been t using the aristotelian notion for decades now that um, the praxis was a different beast than, than the hard scientists. That is, the social scientists are a different beast because people are agentive and changeable and they can learn and they can learn to learn and they're interactive and there's reflexive effects in what you try to do in your analysis and, and, um, and implementation. So you have, to, you have to exercise practical judgment. But anyway, he, Arvo took that idea and he's, he's trying to say that... Um, People don't understand that you can't pin down um, how who the elites are and how they're going to function, and this is dead wrong. Um, he's trying. <laughs> he's trying. He's trying to say. I, I think he's trying to say. You know, for the sake of his like little uh, uh, community that he wants to build, with, you know, Christian Platonic uh, community of book readers or, or whatever. But it's wrong because. The kosher folks are not, they have to, they can't change, they have to advocate themselves, whether it's but whether it's coming through the emergence of the genetics or top down from uh, their uh, you know, niche power and influence in the rule structures that they try to enforce from those seven to 10 niches. And also not changing is the, the incentives of the right wingers who don't want to be bothered with accountability and um, the fact of their indebtedness to us as people, they want to believe that they are there on top, taking the payoff, rightfully justifiably taking the payoff because they're they're objectively superior. They're special. Yes. They're special, and and the liberals are the same thing. Same they, on the left, they, by the way. They have a, a somewhat different incentive probably that's more a matter of license and licentiousness with the liberals than it is money but but they're they also believe that they're they're being flattered that they're objectively warranted and, and flattering themselves and therefore not not very much accountable to uh us as being part of their historical cause of being in evolution um so that and the jews understand this though and so, but these things don't change. These incentives don't change. People, people might come out of it. It's possible that right wingers might, you know, become human beings and liberals might become human beings. But these incentives and the permanence of them as an adversarial position won't go away. It doesn't have to be just whites who are doing the right wing and liberal thing. And this can be uh, other non-whites who are trying to crash our borders and boundaries or ignore our borders and boundaries because of that and the, and the jews have their own reason of course uh but this is where our fall is is dead wrong the, these things are not these things are, are quite predictable in regular patterns in terms of who you know how our radar tracking device would you know look where it would look first for uh, border threats, of course, the YKW, and then also, and anybody is going to realize that 
uh, you know, our traders and, and our people were indifferent or as big a problem as anything. I call them right wingers and uh, liberals. <laughs> well, one of the problems that I've seen in the dissident riot is that it doesn't have any kind of original kind of thought. It can call its own. It always, it always seems to piggyback off um, some of these more mediocre thinkers as opposed to in developing and fleshing out kind of ideology upon its own. And they, yeah, they yeah are, it's, it's like they've been, handed, they've been handed a calling book and, yeah. they're, and a security it's blanket. Politics by numbers. <laughs> yeah, I could agree with that. At least that's my perception from being into it. It seems to follow the same pattern. And I've noticed this pattern from even from what I've researched going all the way back into the 1990s. It hasn't changed. It only changed, only the faces and the uh, people have changed. The methodology has been updated a little bit because of technology, the way it's dispersed. But that only makes me more curious as to what intelligence agencies are involved in its dispersion and- Oh, they are. Yeah. And dispense of uh, dispensing of certain Types of ideologies, vi memes, and other formats. Definitely. Think of, think of it, social justice warriors. They, they, they want they want us to be against social justice. They want us to be against equality. And, and our you know oh yeah, <laughs> and these people stupidly go along with it. Oh yeah, let's be against social justice. Brilliant, brilliant, Mister Right, Mister Dissident Right, Jesus. I'm more interested in, however, I know you're interested in the philosoph you know, the philosophical aspects of like, um, you know, these issues. I'm more interested in sort of the technical aspects of them and how they were able to hijack political movements and direct them in, um, you know, certain directions and veer them in a certain kind of way with certain particular well, cool. figures. There's definitely uh, gaps in the, in the uh, white box or black box there, like how, how they made these, uh, where these connections occurred. That's, you know. And from what I've figured, I think um, even this, this Tito bomb guy is, is onto something, even if he is a Jew. I think he's uh, leading in the I right mean, direction you, in terms you of can get, the foundations. You, you, yeah. Right? You, you, you can get some information from. Anybody, including Jews. It's, uh, yeah. It's possible. I think that's a misnomer to say that you you can't completely sort of validate or trust some of the data points that our enemies sort of research. And I think they uncover it. They do better research than than us in many Sometimes. ways. Yeah, well, well off, quite often, but uh, still, I can't trust them. <laughs> That seems like, well, I'm not saying I want to plan any kind of political movement with them, or nor do I want them ruling over me. The thing is, I also don't want many of these dissident right people to rule over me or to dictate my future of the course of, you know, any country I'm in. I don't trust them. I don't want, neither do I, I. I look upon them with the same skepticism I do some, you know, leftists. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, like I said, for for one thing, not to be too repetitious, but they're they're uh, they're short of they're short on the on the, on social accountability, and that makes them uh, unstable, unreliable, and uh, and uh, and crass. <sighs> Sometimes brutal. I feel funny. I feel I feel funny saying that to you. <laughs> It's, it's, so, you, <laughs> you just love being brutal. Oh, come on, Daniel. Well, Patrick of the shoe fits. I'm not saying what you can't. You? I'm not saying you can't. You can't become. So, Patrick, what did you have in mind with the, with the music stream? I don't want to discuss this. Do you want to discuss this on here? This is the Daniel stream. I didn't know it was going to be uh, controversial. It's not controversial. I just 
doing out of respect for Daniel. Oh, okay. no, it's, okay. it's okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm sort of. I just thought while you're here, but yeah, I mean, we can. Um, um, no, we, no, we can. You can talk about it. I, I don't, I don't mind at all. The thing, the, the, because in fact, basically, what I'm doing at this point, I've said what I, what I set out to say okay. in, in the beginning of the site, and so what I'm doing now is I'm just stretching it out in case even more interlocutors want to want to join, because they won't be able to stream again until the 22nd. But it's not. It's not a bit. We could keep the stream going. We could talk about music, or we okay. could, you know, it, 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 or we could shut down. It doesn't. It, it doesn't matter. At well, point. Marshall, you expressed some interest in having, you know, a music stream, and I thought it might be a good departure from the usual fair talking about politics, talking about Jews, or etc. Or maybe even I don't know, mixing all together because I look at all these other podcasts from the opposite sides. And I sometimes get jealous of them, especially on the left, is that they have a more wide, they they have a wider palette of discourse. They do, uh, yeah. When it comes, and I and I often see these people are not only stupid, they're very one dimensional, and they don't want to expand, yeah, yeah, uh, sort of their, uh, you know, their subject matter to include other topics. So it's always either Jews or it's it's. You know, it's I, I personally want our race. I want to talk about other things than just these topics. And how do you do yeah. music without, without without running afoul of um, uh, copyright stuff? Well, it can be just be discussion about you know oh, music, okay. but you know, about so, it, genres, uh, bands. You know, uh, that's what, ru- what that's what ru- that's what ruins it. I, I, it's a shame that you can't play the songs that you like. Although Lauren can, Southern, did, just, Lauren can, Southern, just, did, she was playing David. Bo- she was playing David Bowie's "Rebel Rebel," and I was wondering how the fuck did she I do think that? You, I think you can, but you can't monetize it. Um, or at least you can get away if it's lesser known, like stuff. Like yeah, it doesn't matter. Or maybe they released it. Yeah. Yeah. So I just put that out there as a suggestion. Uh, it doesn't matter how what route you take it. I'll give you complete creative control, you know, on that, Marshall, because you're probably more knowledgeable about the subject than I am. I'm not a very music aficionado, to be honest. Marshall's a musician. No, he just yeah, music more than I do. Huh? No, I'm no, I'm actually. Oh, you a are? Okay. Um, okay. What do you play? Keyboards, but but usually I am. Um, well, and a little bit of guitar. Um, but usually, I use a, um, a sequencer, so I don't actually um, play the instrument. I just use a computer. Like underrated sound, computer. the old the old Fender Rhodes before the uh, before the um, synthesizer was. I mean, the closest I ever got to being a musician was like programming a, a machine for uh, like eight oh eight drum machines, and also some pretty loops for like you know hip hop beats that I used to like make. Like what's long time ago? Yeah, Wigger, Wigger Patrick. I don't know about Wigger, but uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't actually want to be black. So, but I mean, you. See, my vision sure. was to. My, I mean, my vision was to um, make a, a YouTube channel, zero politics, zero religion, reviewing albums, discussing music, um, and possibly. Doing interviews, um, I'm pretty also, flexible with it. Themes and, um, there also, is themes also oh. of the music. Themes. Oh yeah, lyrics and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm subscribed to that. Might work. I'm subscribed to quite a few of those of those musical review channels. I'm not. I'm not but tired of. Although, although, right? some, although some some of them are able to get interviews with famous musicians well, you although can if you grow you can if you grow the thing is I, like although, although I, I i don't find musicians to be the most interesting people in the world either the thing is a lot of the stuff i listen to is like, is very unknown and i'm like it's stuff that nobody's reviewed like i'm going to be doing serious reviews of like, you know 20 minute reviews i, I don't know how many people are going to find it interesting but i'm also going to intersperse um you know reviews of popular stuff um and mainly i'm going to be shitting on that because i i think most pop music's garbage 
and it'll be fun. What music uh, do are you interested in, Patrick? Who me? Yeah. Very various types. Me, I I went through. The problem was is that I, music was almost too good for me, and I was like a music addict early in my life. You give me a cup of coffee and headphones, and I could be happy, and it's not good because you're, you're not doing anything else. You're not reading. You're not right. Um, I mean, you're you're engaged with certain kind of processes of thought and, and uh, imagination, but I it got to a point where I had to uh, go cold turkey, and I sold all my albums, and um, you know went back to school. So I, I um, and I've never been as big on music ever since. Although I I still enjoy it at times. I, but usually I have to be a little bit drunk to, <laughs> to really enjoy it. What are you in a boomer rock? No, I mean, well, that's at one time that's what there was, so that's what you listen to. I'm not one of these people. Who, I'm not one of these people who thinks that the older music is better than today's music. I just, I, I, um, I just um, don't do music so much generally anymore. So uh, that's what I know is the older stuff, and actually, I'm a bit tired of it myself. Um, but uh, a lot of it was great, and a lot of and. I show people stuff on my website on the, on the trout mask on the trout mask stream stuff that they might not be familiar with because it's really cool stuff and it's very it's a very implicitly white thing rock music so uh, or most of it and and so I'll, you know that's why that's why I show it not because I think it's the only good music the old the old stuff but uh, that's what I know. You like Alice in Chains, right? Yeah. Down in the hole. That's it's a great, great song. song. Yeah. It's a they're sad song. It's a sad the song. Politics, the politics, politics, politics song. song. The politics song. And I, and I, I like this song. Really like this song, Wood, as well. Um, uh, it's great. Uh, the, you know, they really. The, the, yeah. What's good about them is not only are they, they strong musicians all around, the voice, the guitar, the, the bass, the drums, but they are very they capture a masculine aggression that rock, rock, rock and creativity that rock music had from its inception at its best and they carry it forward in a way that was lagging for a long time and uh, it's a shame that they, they grunge is that technically yeah the grunge and it's a shame that like 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 kurt cobain like nirvana they suffered from not understanding uh, what post-modernity was supposed to do. And in people who don't understand the differences between modernity, post-modernity, and so on, they they wind up confused. And and they wind up people like Kurt Cobain. Uh, and they suffer for it. And Alice in Chains was the same thing. So they're, they're between that not understanding how postmodernity was should have been uh, helping white guys to not only defend themselves against political correctness, but also to balance their quests for self-actualization. Yeah, the, the only thing that grunge they they, they they went over the top. They, you know, they they had to you know take strong drugs to try to stay on top of the. Uh, yeah, I was the, gonna say the, the, the only the thing grunge helped me do was shoot heroin. Yeah, which is disgusting. I, you know, it's a, I mean, I can't it was imagine. Heroin rock. That's what. That's yeah, what it, it was. It was. It was. And unfortunately, it, it you know, it sounds very good, but it's a hell of a price to pay. It's too much of a price to pay. So and, you like um, Rush, though? Um, I like Alice in Chains. You know, I like Nirvana. The first couple of times you hear it, you can't listen to it too much. It's like a you know eating a yodel. You know, it's, it's is "Rape Me" your favorite song? No, I don't like that. I don't really like that. <laughs> um, but I like uh, a few of their songs a lot. I, but I, there's a lot. But Alex, Alice and Chain songs are more enduring. And um, yeah, Eddie Vedder. The, 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 what was what, what, Eddie Vedder's group? Pearl Jam. No, that was yeah, it's, it, it, I like Black. They had a few good songs. Um, um, I'm not like crazy. I'm not like super crazy. But Alice and Chains was one of my yeah. That was that was a group I liked. 
Now they now they got a colored singer. I don't like him anymore. Do you like Face No More? Who? Face, Face No More. more. Um, I I think they had a, a good song or two. I don't know a lot about them. What, you'd you'd know some of these songs if you heard them. Yeah, I'm probably. I, just, I don't remember offhand. <coughs> But I'm pretty, I'm pretty flexible, Pat. Like, if you want to do like a, I don't know, like, I was probably gonna like do my. You'd channel probably be like, the, you'd probably be the star of the show, not me. It's probably gonna start it next year, but I mean, like, my, my actual channel. Um. But yeah, I mean, we could just. Do, I mean, pretty much whenever I'm down to talk about music. Okay. So if you just want to do, I mean, we could do it on the Killing Fields, or could do it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, like, I mean... Um, you didn't say who else that you liked, Patrick. I don't really have any specific names. Um, if I like the beat and it sounds nice to me, then I'll listen to it. I'm not really, like I said, a big music aficionado. Yeah, well, it's, well, it's For most of my life, I have to be yeah. honest, I've listened mostly to non-white music. Well, so the, well, the problem is that some of it is very good, and, and it's, um, you know, it's a guilty pleasure that it, that um, I've liked a lot of it, indulged in a lot of it myself. I used to be a big Hendrix freak, um, and uh, but I've had I I've sworn off of it because I don't uh, I don't want my attention there. Um, we had when it's back at the back in the voice of reason days we had a musicologist who did a brilliant discussion of how it is that the repetition of black music um goes directly to older parts of the brain which are um addictive yeah. so they're like a, it's like a narcotic and i i see that as dangerous and a, a dangerous aspect of of black music um and they do have apparently scientifically an inborn rhythm, rhythmic exactly. advantage. Really, really. Generally, not, not, not that, that whites don't sometimes aren't more rhythmic than they it's, are. It's but, been proven, really. It's, yeah, I mean, they, well, you could see the, the way they just automatically start dancing. But here's the point that I want to make it's kind of like a, an automatic, almost like insect kind of thing. So that it's really good, but whites and not having that automaticness are forced to um, reach and improvise in a more far-reaching way that uh, can be, you know, the ultimate and sublime when they do do it, when they do manage it. Um, you know, Bach, for example, I, you know, is, you know, as I said, everybody sucks compared to Bach. <laughs> I like Bach. Yeah. I like Bach. Yeah. But I do have my guilty pleasure. I love the song um, Compared to What by Les McCann and Eddie Harris. Um, particularly the line, uh, you know, th this is going to make Patrick not like me anymore, but... Uh, it's entitled Tired Old Ladies Kissing Dogs. I hate the human love of that stinking mutt. I can't use it. I'm trying to make it a, a real compared to what? <laughs> Why would that make me hate you, Daniel? Not like because you. you have dogs on your farm. I know you do. What? You have dogs on your farm. That's why you like dogs. Oh, I don't dislike them. I, I do. I, I can tolerate little ones, but I, you know. No, I I don't dislike dogs, man. I don't like taking care of them. I really don't. Do you like taking care of any animals, Daniel? Not really. Exactly. Like well, I said, I like chickens. I, I think they're beautiful. I like chickens. I like pigs. I think pig, especially wild pigs. I think are it's just uh, your little autism, great. Daniel. Yeah, what well, a great looking animal. And chicken, they're funny too, chickens are. 
Do you like uh, do you like roosters? Yeah. How about game? Great, cocks? great, great, like great color, great colors. You know, they come from. They originally come from uh, Vietnam. That's where they. What? That's where they evolved from. Well, all chickens. Oh, chickens. Oh, yeah. They all come from. from I know from it's somewhere Vietnam. in Asia they came from. Vietnam. Okay. Genetic, the, the genetic that's tracing. Were, that's where they were domesticated, or were they domesticated? I think in China. If China is the first to domesticated chickens. Yeah. When you when you cook a chicken, before you cook, cook a chicken, you got to poke it with holes and put little pieces of garlic in each of the holes, and then it cooks yeah. up with a real nice flavor. Yeah. Do you, do you grow garlic? No. But I could. It's not hard. And you should. Yeah, I should. I should also grow onions. Why not? Yeah, why not? Five acres. That's really good. that's a that's a good uh, good haul. Good yeah. job. Especially in the the hilly uh, country out there. A lot of people part. are. A lot of people are kind of bemoaning that's now. I noticed there, there's been this trend going against homesteading now, and the the dr you could say. Shit. Yeah. I don't get it, but there there does seem to be a trend now. Well, if you enjoy it, it's not for everybody. It's not. I don't. It's hard. It's uh. It's not easy to be a farmer. You're gonna you're gonna be really pretty. Well, I'm not really and, a proper oh, farmer, man. I'm just, I'm just well, a hobbyist. City life is good for me. If, I, yeah. But then again, growing up in America, a white city was an unthinkable thing. So yeah. it's, like, it's like a dream. And I don't like the suburbs either. So No, the suburbs are not good. The suburbification of like the white race is been disastrous. It's, a, it's so expensive between between the house and the, the car that you got to have. It's really it keeps it keeps you trapped in, in a in a job that that keeps you paying having to pay attention to shit that you don't want to pay attention to. Absolutely, yeah. it's an illusion though. I mean, it, because the houses are can be extremely beautiful. And the settings, you know, the, with the like in Montclair, New Jersey, where I was from, the, the old the old trees and the parks, it's all, you know, in softball on on the, the weekends. It's you know it's it's got an allure to it, and, and then you say to yourself, you're going to have one of those fantastic mansions on the top of the hill. Uh, I don't know why, but you know, a lot of people become house it really, really placates people. And they become house poor. They become trapped. You know, they, they have this huge... Because they'll say, like, people will say, oh, I own a house, but if you have a mortgage, you don't own a house. Not yet. If you pay you the know, taxes. How many, you pay the taxes how many on people, How many people own a house without a mortgage? If you pay, and, and even then, if you, just to pay the taxes... Property it's, tax, it's, yeah. It's, it's like not owning it. So, they're so expensive. Well, there is a way to actually purchase a house, though, forever. You have to obtain something called an allodial title. I don't know about in America, but you have to like get a law. It's ridiculous. Like it's fine print. Do you have a house or a trailer on your property, Patrick? I have a small micro house. Oh, that's cool. I like small houses. But I have uh, campers and some other dwellings there as well. I don't know if I'm going to stay here permanently, so I don't. I have uh, only, I only have like this temporary dwelling for now. I actually have a bunch of micro houses I converted out of uh, shipping containers. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, awesome! It's a great idea. They're fully you functional. Put, you they have bathrooms. They have electricity. They have one has a a deck. And, uh, and this is this is where you put up your meth added clients. <laughs> <laughs> I don't deal yes. meth. I don't deal meth, man. No, no, I, mean, I don't mean clients as in 
being a dealer, I mean, as in your, your, uh, under your, your care for. No, 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 no. Why would I? Why would I do that? Why would I do that? Um, well, I think it's something that could be good for uh, someone like Norvin to uh, get some <laughs> property, get some property from, you know, with the help of his mother in Wyoming and then throw up some trailers and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, he had, I think he has it backwards when he said that he was looking for, th th that he went to a sperm bank and the women didn't want his sperm because it was under six feet tall. Um, rather, he should be, should start with the fact that just like this incel is a, is a, is a, is a non-existent phenomenon if you have $50, so not being able to find not being able to find a woman is well i don't see that much, that we'll have your that baby much. hold on hold on hold on we'll have your baby is a non-existent phenomenon if you're willing to, to have an ugly woman who's drug addicted and a prostitute <laughs> it really depends how far starting from are. there and to work out for a little better something some woman who will there's got to be some woman who will take your money in order to have somebody a baby. somebody that is that damaged. I don't know if you want them to prove No, you of course no, of course not, but it, it's just to prove it's like saying is there life in outer space? Yes, yeah, probably. So there's a woman out there who will have your baby. That's that's starting from, you know, ground Maybe. Zero. I don't know. It's it's you about don't, sexual don't think somebody would have Nor Norman's baby. It's about sexual market value, man. No, because no, because you're you're talking about like I said, you're, you, there's, you see some of the guys that these women will have babies with, and you know, and they probably have and, money. Not necessarily, but so does Norvin, and but not enough. Um, hold on, just a second. <laughs> I'll be right back. Don't don't fed post. I'm not gonna fed post, man. What's what's four inches long and two inches wide and drives w women crazy? A <laughs> credit card, money. Yeah, but yeah, they're pretty much synonymous. Credit card money. Yes, <laughs> and they're also proportional to the type of woman you're going to get in America. You know that's that's actually true. That's, that's actually accurate. Oh, yeah. That is the axiom to live by in Ameriqua. <laughs> yeah, Ameriqua is basically whoever has more money has more power. Yes. As the uh, kosher folks have demonstrated. That's also true. But if you're, if you're only looking to her, to this ugly drug-addicted prostitute as... A surrogate. <laughs> if you're only looking to her as, as a surrogate, that that it's not necessary that you be be able to get it up and find her attractive. Yeah. That, 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 you know, <laughs> she's, you, you don't have to live with her. You don't care what her personality is like. You don't care what her IQ is like. You don't care what she looks. She's just someone who had a baby for you, <laughs> right? And she and she takes care of, she takes care of the baby and. You know, shares her drugs with with your with your son or daughter. <laughs> See, that's and, and we start from there, not with a very achievable goal. Hey, Jan hey, Daniel, was you making that comment about uh, method to clients? Kind of a jab. It's like kind of a jab. Were you making a sort of jab? Not really. Um, what I was what I was suggesting is that. Um, I was recalling your days when you tried to help uh, drug addicts with recovery. And was, oh yeah, you, well that that actually wasn't tied to any particular. Um, no, that was on opiates. That wasn't meth addicts. Uh, that was just a good gesture I was trying to do, uh, working through some local organizations, local like nonprofits, was trying to help out with uh, with opiate addicted people well that could that could be that could be a means of government money too to, to keep yeah. your units rented yeah i so do that, that's, that's what i saying. Like, i didn't think i didn't think it was necessarily the, the best idea i wouldn't i don't know i don't know if i would okay. want to deal with those people 
But, yeah, but, personally, that's what I learned. I learned a lot of those people are just uh, are that way because largely they want to be that way. Right. And I, I don't like to say this, but maybe um, people addic addicted to opiates, them dying and, you know, might be a form of natural selection. I don't like yeah. saying that, but it could be true. Yeah. Well, I can't, I can't, I could never understand anybody could do, I can't, I can't imagine shooting up. I just, I never could relate to that. It's so bizarre to me. And people know. I don't know, boredom, despair. That probably drives people to such things. I, I just can't imagine it. I, for me, uh, it's it's yeah. like, um, um, and you know, I mean, it's just the reputation is so established that opiates are so powerfully addictive that it's going to do this, and these people are going to turn into a social menace, thieves. <sighs> I don't want to. I don't want to be around people who who are going to do anything. You know, to including steal the money or whatever they have, to, or be prostitutes in order to to get their fix. And I I don't know why anybody would want to be that way. Uh, they know it's going to happen. I I don't know. I, I have my addiction. My my addictions. My yeah, call, yeah, yeah. My coffee and you know. And. Um, Certain foods I can't resist. You're addicted to live streaming. No, no, not really. Um, I'm doing some things that have to be done. It's it's a, it's a job. To you do. feel you feel you're making progress. Yeah, I do. These these streams will be here, and uh, um, they should be of use to people. Um, so, yeah. And Marshall will be here too. Forever yeah. known for being on the stream. Around, yeah, probably if it's around this time. And then Daniel will be on an Antifa algorithm. So far, I haven't been. Let's see, have I had any. Very minimal. Uh, encounters well, with it. How does Andy. it feel, Daniel, to be linked with a lot of underground and obscure parapolitics podcast, a extremist pod, extremist podcast, like in the algorithms? Well, extremists. I mean, the thing is, the, um, <laughs> <laughs> here I stand. I can do no. You're other. connected to the farm now. The farm. Yeah, is there's a podcast. Charles Manson. Farm. Yeah, you're connected to it. Is it Charles Manson. No, that's nothing to do with Charles Manson. <laughs> the parapolitical synchro mysticism podcast. Yeah, well, they're, they're they're always doing that. They're always trying to make you guilty by associations or strange yeah. by associations. That's what I mean. <laughs> um, it was it was a uh, frustrating that kind of thing at one time, but as I've finally been able to stabilize the the platform and get it under my control basically getting away from majority rights. Um, I, you know, now if people listen to me and come to see what I have to say, then that stuff will be quickly uh, disabused. Well, there is a woman that she tries to link various different far-right podcasts together. Yeah? And she links mine? No, but probably she would. If, uh, I suppose. If she knew certain people were on here. <laughs> and she might. 
She might if she discovers it. Oh, is she white? I said. Yes. Her name is Megan Squire. Is she Jewish? Don't know. It's possible. Then she's not white. I don't know for sure, but I don't. I don't think she's Jewish. But I don't know for sure. I have to look at her early history Wikipedia. In all honesty, I think the people who are opposed to me are the immoral ones. I wouldn't say she'd be opposed to you. Well, probably. Ideologically. But she's a, probably a careerist and opportunist. And a, she, cli she climbs that like uh, academic ladder. Some of these women are probably just scared because they've been such <laughs> sluts and pigs that they that they feel guilty and and uh, I think most they see of them are opportunists. They, and they see how, how they're destroying our people. So they they. Uh, you really think they have that much foresight into it? That much foresight? I don't think it so. Doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of foresight to be scared. Uh, some of, I think some of them are scared. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't think I don't, their reaction is that reflective. You know, it doesn't take any reflection to be scared. Just, but just, I mean, uh, what you're saying, I don't think they take any consideration in that I mean, that being you know, a slut is a, is affecting the, you know white people as a whole. I don't think they care. No, yeah, probably not. Maybe right about that. They're not that reflective in life. They just do things because it brings them pleasure or it brings them some type of benefit. Yeah. Well, this is, that's why we need borders and boundaries so that they can you know, get out and do their thing somewhere else. <laughs> So there's a big lake around you? Any place to swim? Yeah, there's uh, lots of lakes. Good. Yeah. You know, fat Walmart women or any... any... <laughs> it ranges, but believe it or not, less fat Walmart women up here than there was in Florida. Believe it or not. Really? I would expect there'd be more. Yeah. Huh. I didn't know you were down in Florida. I thought you were up in New Hampshire. You're all over the place, man. I am all over the place. No, I'm not in New Hampshire. I'm in uh, I'm in the Upper South. I was in New Hampshire for a little while. I know you don't like to pinpoint yourself, but you're like in, I know, not far from Kentucky, West Virginia, yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. So, that's, 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 that's a beautiful area. I'm, yeah, it is. I'm, a little, I'm a little jealous of that, except for, except for the the poverty and the, and the drug addiction. The poverty, the the poverty and the drug addiction thing is is um, is um, very existent. Yeah, that, that that makes me sad, and uh, I wouldn't want to have to deal with that. Did you see that Mark? Did you see that Mark later interview? Where he interviewed that uh, inbred family. That was weird. yeah. I saw that the Whitakers. Yeah. Oh shit. We watch soft wet underbelly. Yeah, though I'm getting a bit tired of it. These these people are just like uh. Yeah. A lot of the um, the non-whites have actually um become stars off no soft wet underbelly. And yeah, people probably think that they're really, you know, down with it. Really cool. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I think the pimp the guy interviewed actually became a star. He's a he's quite a sensation. I cannot understand. I can't understand a woman being a prostitute. That is so disgusting. So unsanitary. They gotta get money. Like having having sex with oh Jesus God. They have that to is money. disgusting. They have to get money. 
these drug addictions, they must be really, really intense right here. There's some women they... that actually, um, not many, but there's some women that feel they're sexually liberated and. They <laughs> yeah, a few, a few of them were saying that. I saw it was one yeah. middle class woman was saying that she liked yeah. it. There's good. a woman. She's college educated, good parents, and, yeah. and she's doing this. Yeah. Oh, but others, you know, the, the drug addiction, they say that, that, that uh, the withdrawal is just unbearable. But by <sighs> metaphor, they say your hair hurts. Everything hurts. So. And then there's apparently a 10-year thing that there's, you know, you stay blatantly addicted for 10 years so that, if, you know, you're, you're prone to, to relapse for a good 10 years after you become heroin addicted. But apparently, the, the bliss must be so intensely good that, that uh, people can't resist it. wonder if it would be possible to create um, a drug that... Mm, no, I think mm, there's always going to be the come down, you know, like this compensating come down. So you probably it'd probably be impossible. Like, Jones, like jonesing on cocaine is is the worst. Totally depressing. But you could, there's you, there's strategies for that too. Like take a quaalude, smoke a joint, go to sleep, and uh, and you're all right. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm, I'm gonna bail. Um, I think I am too. To Good talking to you, Marshall. Yeah, it's good, it's good catch, catching up with you. Mm -hmm. And as always, good talking to you, Patrick. Um, yes. Yeah, sure yeah. I'm pretty flexible with the music thing. Just let me know. All right. But um, definitely in the future, we should do some collabs, whether that be music reviews or movie oh, yeah. reviews. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Excellent. And thanks, Patrick. We might as well. Uh, I journal with that. It's been. I'll. I'll uh, we have to get some sleep. I've been up all night, so. Thanks for stopping by again. And. Uh, oh, no problem. No problem. I'll be back around the the twenty second or soon thereafter. And. Um, well, I anticipate <laughs> your return. <laughs> <laughs> have, have fun. All right. And bye for now. See I'm gonna, I will leave the um, stream open for all right for a few more minutes in case someone else wants to join. All right, see it. All right, bye for now. Anyone else? You got five. You got four minutes and. 40 seconds. Okay, it's, it seems like uh, it's not it for today, but this was, uh, I believe, the stream comprises a valuable resource. And I want to thank you all for joining us. I'll see you in...
on the 22nd or soon thereafter. So bye for now, everybody.